What's good, y'all? It's your boy Jay today. Why stay fly for the eight four five? Get your mind ready, get your ground ready. The way you're gonna shine when the times right. You now in tune with Jay's Music Corner, Volume Three, Episode Nine. We got your boy King Vance in the building. What up? Good with it. And we got a special guest, Don P, straight out of Lake Worth, Florida. What's good, y'all? Chilling, man. Chilling. Let's get it. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Black owned business owner, entrepreneur. Make Wall Street black again. What is what influenced that? Which one to uh, build black Wall Street again, or yeah. just uh, everything, the clothing line? Uh, you can start with the black Wall Street and then get into that. So, like, uh, I think a couple of years ago, my sister had sent me these these uh these articles talking about Black Wall Street because I never heard of it. And mm. Black Wall Street happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the area was all black. The dollar never left the community. You know, they had nice. black doctors. Uh, black doctor owned a bus, you know, a bus transportation company. He owned like five jets, you know, airplanes and stuff like that. So, you know, just want to get back to like really focusing on the black owned and stuff like that. Copy. And what influenced you to get into uh, the making the clothing thing? So originally, um, my wife had an idea for like kids' clothing, but baby clothing. Let's mm. say premature clothing, right? Because premature mm. babies don't have a lot of clothes. That's a fact. So I started helping her with that. And then I just transitioned to doing my own thing. And uh double shot apparel came out uh during COVID. And it was just to really people see it. And I like how the logo looked. The logo you see alcohol or you see a plan card and then you see the gun and then you it's it can go however you interpret it. But it really stands for um going twice as hard as you went last year because we never know when we have a year like COVID and lose a year. Mm. So that's really that's what it hard. comes to. You know, yeah, that's hard. Hard. going twice as hard, celebrate twice as hard because you never know when you have a moment like COVID again. And did you used to rap or just a part of the culture, got in the clothing, just part of the culture. No, nah, I used to rap when I was young. Like I used to rap when I was in fifth grade. Like my I got a brother that's seven years older than me. So I knew about I was listening to Master P, you know. I was listening to, you know, so when people talk about music, they don't mention Master P. I knew they wasn't listening to music when they we was say, in uh. you know, I knew they wasn't listening to music like that when we was in uh, elementary, you know what I'm saying? And that's why most, you know, you get the thing, oh, you from the South, yeah, I just play beats. I actually listen to lyrics. I listen to lyrics. But I've been rapping since, I rap from fifth grade all the way up to about 11th grade. Like, I got real good around eighth grade that I didn't even have to write no more. And then nice. once I got up, I just I just stopped writing. But it's kind of funny that I look back and I be like, man, I rap better than these dudes now. Like, when I was in seventh grade. But it ain't based it. off lyrics no more. It's based off other stuff. All right, hold okay. on. Let me ask a question real quick. When you said you, because <laughs> you grew up in the South, so you say listen to Master P and stuff like that, right? Yeah. So I was I was big on No Limit and Cash Money for a long time, oh, yeah, even being from Chicago. Sure. But I had, I'm pretty sure this is probably with Jay. I think we was texting or some shit. I don't know. But I made a comment. I said, bro, some of the music that we grew up on that we thought was fire. And when you go kind back, bro, some of that shit was kind of weak, bro. I need me. So I wanted to ask shit. you because you from the South and you listen to Pete. Can you go back and listen to, I ain't going to say everybody because all of them still to this day, some of them still hard. So I'm not saying all of it, but some of them songs you can go back to and be like, yo, this shit was kind of trash, bro. This <laughs> age well. Like it was kind of trash. Yeah, I mean, if you if you comparing it to music now, you'd be like, yeah, that shit was that shit was whack. But at the same time, it's just like a it's just a classic thing, you know. What I'm yeah. saying? You listen to the music, just bring you back. Like I was in fifth grade when this happened. I was in seventh grade when this. Nah, that's real. That would it be? Because you got to think like, let's think about "Stay Fly," right? With with Baby and Manny Fresh. That sounds still really, hard. That sounds still hard to me though. It's still hard, but that they're not really saying hard. nothing though. <laughs> No, nah, it wasn't. Yeah, lyrically, but I ain't never, t I never looked at them for the lyrics though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially baby. Cool. Yeah, they were just cool. Yeah, exactly. They were just cool. You know, we young. We see them with all the little ice and everything, and the, the driving around the prowlers. Well, nobody else doing that, but them. Nobody driving prowlers. Yeah. I so it was like you know what I mean. It was it, it caught your eye? But it's just some of some of the songs was just kind of trash. It's like 
yo, this song is kind of weak, bro. Like, y'all niggas wasn't flowing right or nothing. Like, y'all just came on the record and just did what the fuck y'all wanted to do. <laughs> so being a Southern dude, I had to ask this. Scarface or Lil Wayne? I'm Lil Wayne. Like, if you talk to South Florida, everybody tell you Lil Wayne, you know. Lil Wayne, the GOAT, boy. Lil Wayne. But, right? but before Lil Wayne, was Scarface Lil Wayne? As far he wasn't as Lil influence. Wayne, but if you want to talk lyrics, Scarface is that guy, though. I mean, I'm in Houston, so I feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but even in did. Chicago, Scarface, <laughs> was, Scarface is hard. I think what Scarface is to Houston, to me, low-key, is what Ice Cube is out there in, in California. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. yeah, they definitely feel that way in Texas. But South Florida is nobody really talking about Scarface, you know, unless you like, older, older than me. But South Florida was really just, you know, like you said, it, it went from cash money to just Lil Wayne. Before it was Lil Wayne, we liked the hot boys, but the main rapper was juvenile that everybody liked. Yep. He was on and then it transitioned to Lil Wayne once they got away from each other. Uh, but being from Florida, you'll hear Lil Wayne, and then before Lil Wayne, you know, they talk about Tupac and stuff like that. But Where does uh, Rick Ross fall in that category? What you mean, like, well, look, everybody, everybody down here like Rick Ross, man. You know, everybody. No, Ross is hard. When Rick he Ross said, what, what did he say in that whole song? Oh, he said top 10, but never mentioned yeah. something like that. That's true. Top 10 ever? Not right. like in the South. He he could say the same. Ross is up there, man. If y'all go back and really listen to his catalog from the Port of Miami up until his latest project, Ross got some shit. And he's not, man, he's not mentioned. He's Just to keep it a buck, he's not. I'm going to tell you this. He's one of the hardest people to put their albums in order. You look at all the albums, you'll be like, dang, that's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can probably say one of the, you, you know, everybody say, oh, your first album the hardest. But when you really look at all Rick Ross albums, you can't put them in order. I think he got better. I will put Port of Miami number one, though. It's a I classic. It's a classic. So what me. was Apple of My Eye on? That was a later one. Santorini a, Greece. Yeah. Was that, that was a more recent one? one, but it was like the last couple of years. The shit he was, was dissing, Black baby. Market. That was I the like, that was on the out al- that was on the album that had the uh record where he went at Birdman. Yeah, I like that album the best. No, that album was hard too. Is that Hood Billionaire? That song, uh, bro, I can't look crazy. He dropped two that year. I think it was Black Market, and then he did uh Hood Billionaire. That's mixtapes, or you talk about albums. I'm talking about albums. He dropped two albums one year. Could be you know, they ain't really marketed uh, a lot, but that was an album. Something rather. Uh, oh, you rather talking you about than me. Rather you than me. That's a hard one too. Is that the album that was on? So I'm trying to find out right now. Yeah. Yeah, Ray Ross. I'm tripping. I usually know this stuff with no problem, but I'm tripping right now. I probably, yeah, talk, I probably drunk too much already. <laughs> Nobody now, I'll be on my music shit, bro. No, no bullshit. Now you got me looking it up. Santorini, Brick Rose. I think it was. I think it was rather you than me. Hold on. Thank you, right? Rather you than me. Yeah, that's the hardest shit, bro. It is. It is that. It's yeah, but, yeah. It's that. To segue off of that, we got Jake Paul beating Anderson Silva, MMA legend. To me, I think all this shit is like plagiarized or some fake ass shit he had him with the frank the big ass eye i don't know he's i seen him get a few clean hits anderson silver do you guys believe this or you think this is like they hyping jake paul up to be like a real boxer or you think he's a real boxer i don't think he's a real boxer <laughs> i don't think he's gonna get in there with them real boys like javante or anybody like that you know I don't think you're a real boxer. Just are you celebrating his victory? Is it an accomplishment, or they throw the fight? It's. I think. I think it's. I think it's real. But you know, Silva is M- You know, MMA. Like you grabbing people, you choking people, you slamming people. Just going with hands. He a different player. You know what I'm saying? Like you. It's like somebody telling you, rap like one way, and you don't even rap like that. Mm. <laughs> Somebody tell you to rap off a house music beat, and you like, what? What are you talking? You know what I'm saying? So he restricted. 
That's only 20% of his fighting. You know what I'm saying? This is a person that's kicking, submissions, slamming, elbow. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't fought no real boxers yet. So you yeah, think it's you think it's possible for a Jake Paul to beat Anderson? Yeah. Yeah. Straight yeah. up. Okay. I mean, he probably I ain't watched the fight to be honest. I ain't really a fan of Jake Paul or his brother, whatever the other fool name is. Yeah, I, I ain't really fans of them. But I mean, if he get into a, a ring with some real boxers, somebody with a name, then if he able to beat them, then I I give it to him. But until the then, fuck I ain't trying to hear none of that shit, bro. That man ain't no real boxer. He fighting old retired ass MMA fighters, bro. We we good on that. All right. Flex says Pusha T got next challenges him to drop new albums. Where do you rank Pusha T in the rankings of everybody in music? I'm gonna tell you, I don't really listen to him. Oh shit! I'm gonna tell you, I don't really listen. To him. I don't got a like, problem with him. I just that's yeah. why I like bringing people on that ain't from the Northeast, bro. Yeah, I mean, I, I ain't from the Northeast. I mean, we close, but I ain't from the Northeast. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, no, I listen to we push. Had show it. I just don't feel like Flex needs to challenge him to drop mo- to drop a new album. I mean, he just dropped. I kind of think he did that because he don't fuck with Drake like that, so he knows that's his nemesis. So he trying to like shout him. Drake out. and Push ain't even on that no more. That shit old, bro. It's it's over with. Push said what he had to say. Drake didn't make no comeback. We claim he did, and Prince told him not to do it. Hey, you ain't had no comeback. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it! And if you did, it wasn't gonna be against Push. It was gonna be against Kanye. What the fuck they gotta do with Push? Mm. They ain't got shit to do with Push. Say what you gonna say, nigga. That man put your whole family business out there, and you gonna allow somebody else to tell you not to put a diss record out? To me, bro, like when I look fuck at that diss, when I look at that diss shit, like him saying he ain't got a son, maybe he just didn't want it in the public eye. I didn't understand why it was so painful. You know what I mean? <laughs> because nobody knew he had a kid. <laughs> Niggas heard the record. It was like, wait a minute, you got a kid? The fuck is going but on? But I think <laughs> even when you know a celebrity, sometimes you don't even know the the real name of the kid. You know what I mean? Like Nicholas Cage name ain't really Nicholas Cage. I think well, they just use the stage prank. names. You know what I mean? Jamie Foxx yeah, name ain't Jamie Foxx. Like a lot of niggas use stage be names. To be. But, but I mean, it was just the fact that what it was the the biggest issue is everybody made it an issue that Pusha T brought up. His personal family business, but people forget the last song Drake dropped. He put Pusha T's wife in it. Ring like you mentioned my family first, so I can't mention yours now. Mm. You went personal first. Drake went personal first, so Push was like, "Oh, okay, that's what we doing." Bet I got your ass now. Push might not even want to. He probably wasn't even going to take it there, but you mentioned my man's wife. Once you mention family members, all gloves is off. If I ain't never mentioned your family members, not one time, and then you come back with a song and you mention somebody from my family, I might not even come back with a disc record. You have to see me. Because <laughs> now you just made it personal. I could do rap battles all day. We could talk about each other all day. The moment you make it personal, you might just have to come see me at that point. Fuck a disc record. I respect that. Because at that point, I'm not even thinking about what I'm going to say. I'm thinking about what the fuck I'm going to do when we see your ass. Fuck a disc track. Get your shit splat. Me, I, hey, me and my cousin have these conversations all the time when rappers get to going back and forth, and we always say the same shit. Hey, cuz it couldn't be me, cause we going, <laughs> we going. What you say? Oh, okay. A, all right, wait till we horrible, see you, fam. <laughs> this is a horrible transition from that topic, but Barack Obama potentially buying the Suns. <laughs> horrible transition. Shout out to Jay's music order. Well, I think Shaq might be a part of that group. Uh, how y'all feel about Barack Obama owning a basketball team? I mean, it's cool. I was talking to my brother, but he said, "Hey, Barack got bread like that." <laughs> hey, man, he was the president. They don't stop getting paid. I think it's similar to like when Jay Z bought the Nets. Like he was just a partner. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a bunch of partners. I don't think not one person gonna actually out uh, just buy buy him out. But he was just the coolest person in the group. It's fitting though. Yeah. Well, I got a ba- <laughs> he got a basketball background. The man can play ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. So he can play. I, that's not. It's not shocking. It'll be dope. It'll be dope for no. the culture. You know what I'm saying? Because he's one of the people that a lot of people like. First black president. 
but the biggest question is 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 Phoenix as a state is they um I mean Arizona as a state is they um red state or blue state? I don't know. I think they're a swing state to be honest with you. Swing. I think they're both. Okay. Because that goes plays a part whether in if he owns that team, that plays a part in whether the stock goes up or the stock goes down. And if you know the history of that team, <laughs> the, the owner was forced to sell because he was making racist comments. Yeah, he was saying some racist comments. shit. But I mean, all the owners say racist shit. He was just caught saying racist shit. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like the homie in um in LA that owned the Clippers, Clippers at one point. Yeah. He just got caught saying racist shit. They all say racist shit, bro. <laughs> you're not gonna fool me into thinking they all just cool as hell no they all say racist shit <laughs> they just get caught when they get caught then they gotta you know deal with the consequences to but me, they all do that shit you're not gonna sit here and tell me only like, one or two owners is racist get the fuck I, out of here I don't they all understand racist. it cause like look when you go to a job right you have to put on your professional mask that's a fact I, I get owning a company but when you employ everyone you should be smart enough to not speak that way. When or am I asking, you feel am I expecting to too to much? Say. Am I expecting too much from Americans? Yeah, when you own some shit, you say what the fuck you want to say. That's how they feel. They don't get in poly- they don't get apologetic until it affects the money. When it affects the money, that's when motherfuckers want to start apologizing. Mm. I-, I will say this. That's- go ahead. No, you good, go ahead. I will say this, like, you got to realize most of these owners is like 70, 80 years old. You go back 80, 70 years ago, it's what Jim Crow's law is, segregation, you know what I'm saying? So it makes sense why they would be racist if they are. And you notice, not that this really matter, but you notice it's only been caught in basketball. If you got 82 games, you think you... You can hold back saying stuff for 82, you know, 82 games. You you always at the game. You at every single game where an NFL player, I mean, an NFL owner, you got 17 games. You can hold 17 days, but to hold 82 days, if you got a good team, hold 100 days, you're going <laughs> through the, every single game, and you ain't finna say nothing. I mean, it's a little bit harder for them. That's the kind of shot you haven't heard anything about baseball, but baseball is a whole mm. different thing. You know, they play 100 and something games. So if an owner or somebody say something racist, like, man, this dude is here every day. <laughs> but to me, it's more so it's the it's the private. They they don't, they send it in privacy. Somebody just recording. Mm-hmm. So somebody is recording them trying to catch them up. Yeah. Which is, which, it kind of sucks. Can you I know ask what I mean? Because it's like, you got to, you, you should be able to trust the people you're in the room with, regardless of what you're saying. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, bro. I didn't grow up in the South. I'm Spanish. If I grew up in the South in the Jim Crow era, do you think I would be considered a white man? Oh yeah, you'll be considered white. Anybody that's light, they they pretty much want the white people. Hmm. That's why if you if you ever talk to some older black people, they'll see be like, "Hey, that white guy," and I'll be like, "Nah, he's Spanish," and they might say, "Oh, that's the same thing." Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Even though they know it's a difference, but. They said uh, I was told the lights, the lighter skinned people, even if it was like a black person that was like just super white, they was able to go drink at the white water fountain or whatever. Mm. So yeah, no, that's right. Because I feel like the Northeast is different. But so being honest, when I say the word nigga, does it offend you? I know you. <laughs> <laughs> he said I know you. <laughs> Okay. You Spanish and I know you, and we done we done talk plenty of times. But like a person like like that wouldn't consider themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like you you consider yourself one of us because man, you done talk like somebody that just saying it just like not saying it how we saying it, but saying it like racial. You know, racial or saying yeah. it to get a rise out of somebody because you see how that comfortable you was was That's able to difference. say that. You ain't feel nothing when you said that. What well, somebody else might say it and put that extra emphasis or say it with anger or but i never that hard you know, er on the end yeah i never been called that even though in front of so i didn't seen racist people and stuff i never been called that by a racist person like yeah, but I, won't lie, I have when oh, i was you in have? jacksonville yeah that's crazy that's the crazy when outside part. that strip club i don't know what it was called i was waiting <laughs> out there with a lunday i had my giants jacket on i was looking fly as a motherfucker dog <laughs> I was wait, I was waiting for the cab and the bouncer was like, You bleep, go wait over there. I said, All right, this is weird. 
<laughs> you said you're looking fly? Nah, I look hella fly with my fitted on everything. You're look, you looking like drippy. a nigga, huh? <laughs> that, was, that was drippy before drip was invented, you know? Yeah. Like a, like a straight Spanish nigga. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, Chingy, horrible transitions tonight, bro. Hey man, go down the list and try to find some better transitions, bro. Yo, we got we got Chingy. He's mad as hell that he's on the top five uh 50 wackest rappers list. He does he doesn't understand it. Do you understand it? I ain't gonna I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like I went to the Millennium Tour, the first one. Chingy rocked that bit, bro. He's he opened up, he rocked that bit. Yeah. Now 50? No, nah, it's, it's a lot of shit. Top 50. It, Probably ten of them rapping right now. A lot of these rappers that are rapping now is trash. So shit, probably twenty five of them. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if he on the top fifty, man. It's been a lot of trash rappers, bro. Like just, just our adult, you know, our adult time. Chingy was when we was in middle school. Just right now, like I probably right there. he had some classics. What's yeah. that? Uh, calling something that shit was hard. Oh, one, one call away. That shit was hard. Yeah. That shit was hard. Yeah. One call away, the one with Tyrese was hard. Is he like the Ja Rule? The Holiday Inn was hard. You said Ja Rule? Is he like the Ja Rule of the South? He from, as far he as from like St. Records? Louis. What is that considered? Midwest? Midwest. Yeah, that's St. Midwest. Louis, Midwest. That's, that's, that's us. Missouri. That's, that's us, baby. Oh, okay. That's Midwest, bad question, baby. Bad question, bad question. Nah, nah. Like, he's a. Uh... He's Chingy, man. Shit. Yeah, he, he ain't that whack, bro. He. Yeah, Chingy wasn't whack, though. Yeah, I wouldn't say did. whack. You know what I mean? He probably didn't make it to as big as he probably should have or could have. But I wouldn't say he was whack, though. He had some singles. Now, I ain't yeah, let he... listen to his albums. I'll keep it a buck. I never heard the albums. But every song that I've heard him on, straight. that shit was hard. So I can't say he's a whack rapper. I, I, say I that thought Jaquan was going to pop some. His shit he should cool. have, but you know, Jay Quan was a real street dude. So motherfucking her. When house. you got them real street dudes that come from nothing and somebody trying to coach you into something, because I seen an interview mm. with JD spoke on that. They asked him, like, who did you like to work with better? Was it Bow Wow or Jay Quan? And he's like, Well, Bow Wow, because I was able to groom him. He said, With Jay Quan, mm. it was a little different. Jay Quan came to me at I think he was what 18, 17, 17, 18 years old or something like that, but he was homeless on the streets. So it's hard to try to get him to understand how big he can be. He didn't understand how to, you know, turn that street shit off and get into some business. So, you know, Jaquan could have been big as hell, too. Y'all want to get into the first video of the night? Let's go. Who we got? Wait, wait, wait. Before before you go into it, I think Chingy was straight, but the last thing I heard, he had them gay rumors come up. And that's the last time I heard about him. But she, you, know, you know what? That, you know why that messed him up? That was like the beginning of the social media era. Yeah. And nobody did research or nothing. Everybody took what they saw and ran with it. <laughs> Homegirl came out later. Well, homeboy came out later and said that wasn't true. Like, Sierra But the damage is done. The damage was done, though. Niggas got to got chinky the fuck out of here because they thought he was gay. Mm. I don't know why it mattered anyway. Like niggas, he fucking you or nah, like, you know that you know the era we came from, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I'm saying though. But at the end of the you day, know to why. Me, it's just cool. But to now, me, I bro. still feel like is the nigga fucking you though? Is he trying to come and fuck you though? That's my that's my problem. If he ain't come to fuck you, why are you worrying about who the man fucking, bro? Because a lot of these rappers, a lot of these rappers is low-key gay. I don't give a fuck. A lot of niggas is gay. They and y'all would that. be shocked to find out if them niggas really, really want to come out. Y'all would be like, "Damn, for real!" A lot of them niggas the best gay, time bro. to come out. Nah, some of them is, <laughs> accepted now. Some of them ain't doing it, bro, because of who they are. That you You're would literally be like, "Yo, right now, if you did, bro." Hell no, nah, bro. Sydney well, Star took a Kanye picture with approach. that man, and that shit went crazy. All Ching, he said, well, I took a picture with a fan. The person walked over to me and said, can we take a picture? He said, yes. That's what you do. When you that big, you don't know who everybody approaching you is. Mm-hmm. If somebody say, hey, I'm a big fan, can I get a picture? What you going to do? You got to be like Keanu Reeves, bro. You can't touch them. You got to think. Everybody ain't like be, that, though. Like like if, Leo, I was, if, if, if I was big like that and somebody go, yo, I'm a big fan, can I take a picture? Yeah. What the fuck I'm going to say? No. You the reason I am who I am. The least I could do is take a fucking picture. Now, what you decide to do with that picture after I take it ain't got nothing to do with me. 
But I got to live with the consequences if you decide to say, oh, I was with such and such last night. He don't know I'm a man. Or this, that, and the third. And it's like, bro, I did was take a picture. <laughs> and it fucked Chingy up. I feel bad for the brother, though, because, I mean, shit, he was on top. He was one of the ones, for real. You want to introduce this first video, Don Pete? Oh, this my boy? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I got you. This uh, is Ray Freeney, straight out of Jacksonville. Uh, dropping a uh, song called All That. So go ahead and let's see what he's doing. We got so, King yeah. Vance, Don yes, P. Sir. Shout out to Double Shot Apparel. Shout out to TBD Podcast. We got the first video tonight. Ray Freeney, all that. Let's get into it. Once again, it's Jay's Music Corner. We got co-host Vance, put the K-I-N-G in the front. And yes, we sir. also got special guest, Double Shot Apparel, general creator, black-owned business owner, Don P. What did y'all think of that? Well, that's his homeboy. I'm going to go first. <laughs> now, um, now, it was hard. Like I was saying, uh, we was before we start recording, you play like a small snippet just to make sure we can hear it all good and shit. It came on, signed for Young Boy record. Um, the beat wise, of course. Um, but now nah, he killed it though. I, I fuck with it. I like the way he played with the number six in the second verse. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that shit was hard. I fuck with it though. That shit was decent. What do you think? Oh yeah, that shit. That shit was hard. He, like, you know, a lot of you know a lot of Jacksonville rappers got the uh, drill music. You know, spot them, got them. You know, Young and Ace, all of them got the drill music. He actually versatile. He got like other songs. You know what I mean? He got like like songs like Ja Rule would make. You know about women. You know shit like that. And I tell Rainy him, like, man, different. <laughs> I say you different, bro. Like you the only person in Jacksonville that got songs that ain't about killing somebody. And I. But that's the song he wanted me to play. I was like, man, you got other two I would play, but those that's the one he wanted to play. So I was like, all right, I got Shout it. out to Ray Freeney. You got a concert tonight, right? Yeah, you got a concert tonight, too. That's yep. what's up. Any of my Jacksonville followers, go over there, cop them tickets. Ray Freeney performing tonight. Go get them tickets. 
Uh, you seem partially like my come up when we first started, you know, being at the beaches in Jacksonville, handing out CDs, shooting videos. What do you think the difference is now? Because when I lived there, there wasn't too many successful rappers. Why do you think people pop now? With the well, young right Duvals. Now, it's like, you know what I mean? It, it's weird. So like. Lil Duval, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Look, yeah. Lil Duval. That's funny. Because he's singing now and I. Been doing comedy since I was in. He been doing comedy since I was in elementary. Yeah, I Lil first seen him for years. Yeah, I first seen him on Comic View. I was in probably third or second grade. That's how long yeah. he's been doing it. Yeah, he's been around for years. But well, uh, we was around what two thousand nine, eight, ten. Yeah, in Jacksonville, people used to kind of like clown the name when you brought it up. Even though that was the most popular person there. <laughs> what What yeah. is the? Why do they respect people now from Jacksonville? Well, as far as music go, everything is drill rap. You know what I'm saying? Spottom got him, dropped that uh, B-Box, and then, you know, he had to dance, so that blew. And then you got them boys come out with a song, uh, Who I Smoke. You know what I'm saying? So Y'all took yeah. drills to a whole different yeah, to a whole different level. Like, okay. y'all started using the old pop records that didn't even, didn't even exist in that lane and turned into some other shit, bro. Now y'all got people rapping over R&B songs, Talking about drilling their ops, bro. Like yeah. it's to the point where it's funny. <laughs> like <laughs> yo, fam. Like, but they kill it though. If you listen to what they saying, yeah, the shit they saying is crazy. They is talking about killing their ops, but the creativeness part behind it is like, yo, this shit low key hard though. <laughs> yeah, because the who I smoke was over the uh that da -da 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 -da. yeah, like I was like, <laughs> these niggas is crazy, but it's hard though. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. The shit was hard. And then the guy that replied back to his name is uh. Julio. Julio, yeah. His his diss track is off of Fantasia song when I see yep. it. And it's hard. Mm, but it's hard. Bruh. I'm from Chicago, so all that drill shit, I <laughs> fucks with it. So when I hear it, it's like when I hear my own artists in the city talk about it, it's a little different. You know what I mean? Because it's like, damn, I really wish we could come together and make this bread, but I get it. So when I hear other people do it, I don't really know them like that. I don't know the story. I don't know none of that. So I'm just listening to the to the song and I'm just like, yo, as creative as it sounds, it's still fucked up. Man. <laughs> like it's creative as hell. Don't get me wrong, but it's fucked up. Yeah, because Fulio got a song called uh I think it's called List of Dead Ops. And he named 40 people that actually got killed. He named about 40 people and he's talking about how they got killed. That yeah, sounds like crazy. um y'all might not be too familiar, but that's like a rapper from Chicago uh name um 051 Driller. His first song was called 51 Dead Ops. Mm. <laughs> He's literally listing them down. This was like a couple years back. He's literally listing them. Like every name that fell from the from his ops, he's listening. And that shit is like it's creative, but that shit just be wild as hell. Yeah, it's like I'm a fan. I'm a fan of all of them. So some of the names they be they be naming it be people that I'm a fan of music wise, or uh -huh. I just know the story you know behind that person that died. And it's like, damn, it's kind of hard to listen to because you like fuck. I fuck with that dude, but he's talking about it, but it's creative. So you like shit. It's it's kind of hard. Yeah. Yo, capitalizing off a conversation we had on the last episode, rappers being real. We said they were more leaning towards being phony. With that topic you guys just discussed, are rappers real? Are rappers phony? Well, the young the young rappers, a lot of the young rappers, like the ones that talk, like the ones in Jacksonville talk about killing, like they really living like that. But people like Spottom got them. It came out that he snitched. <laughs> There's another I rapper. That. I seen that. Like it's another rapper. It's another. It, it's two rappers in Jacksonville that actually snitched when they had uh like looked them up or whatever. And one dude, I don't think that guy's from Jacksonville. The, the guy that did, he did like a feature. Or something. I think Lil Uzi Vert did a feature for him, and mm. he was like, I "Ain't dropping that because you a snitch." Mm. So like a lot of the young rappers, they they kind of really living it, but like the older rappers probably like the ones we kind of been knew about, like the ones that's probably like eighteen to. 23 probably living it, but the rest of them I don't know. So you saying well, they living you, it, but they minute, no, no. But what would you call real and not real? Because you gotta think about it. When Ice Cube and them came out, the only real gang members in the crew that made it to the mainstream <laughs> easy. was Easy and MC Ren. Yeah. 
Cube ain't never do none of that. I mean, he never claimed to do any of that, but he never did none of that. But he's one of the hardest ones in the in the group. Dre ain't never do none of that, but he's one of the hardest ones in the group for the people that was writing for him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's like, so what do you consider really living your lyrics and being phony? Because Q perspective of it was, I wasn't rapping like I'm trying to be gangster. I'm rapping for the people in my hood that can't rap. Y'all mm-hmm. can't hear them tell their story, so I'm going to tell it. <laughs> so it's like, what perspective are you looking at it in? Are you looking at a perspective of that rapper trying to portray something he ain't, or is that rapper trying to let you know what's going on in his neighborhood that you're not going to know about unless he say something because the news camera is not in the neighborhood? Being a reporter. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's all it really was the first starting out. It was ghetto reporters. Since y'all don't want to come to the hood and, and, and show people what's going on, I'm going to tell you what's going on in the hood. It don't necessarily mean I'm the one that did it. Now, with you being from Florida, I guess you can kind of speak on this a little bit, but when Plies first came out, Everybody was like, yo, Plies. he hard, he hard. I know I fuck with Plies too. On my mom, I do. But when he first came out, I seen it was another rapper that came out, a little young dude, was dissing him. And one thing that caught my attention was he said, that ain't you, you rapping your big brother's life. But my thing is, okay, well, what if his big brother not a rapper? What if nobody know his story? What if Plies is just telling his brother's life story? Does that mean he's a phony rapper or is he just speaking for his brother? Yeah, so I heard that too. They say he rapping his brother life. His, his brother was the big drug dealer. His brother actually owned the record label called Big. Exactly, exactly. So if his own brother got him doing it, then what's the issue? But some of that stuff, you gotta, you, you can't really say if it's fake or not. Because he had a song where he said, "I lie on on a." Uh, he said, "I lie." I on a stand, and then they played that while he was on the stand. <laughs> so I don't know, he might be living it. Then you know, people that try applies like that dude that try to throw him off stage and plies chill that color money shit. <laughs> yeah, Ply, the funny part is his hat never came off, and plies was punching the dude in the face. The dude, he wanted to fight, but yo, that shit went everywhere. But you know, I, I think plies is whatever he, you know he's saying because he man, if y'all. If you heard plies like 2000 and what it was, 2004, 2003, whole different plies. He had a son mm. that said, I don't wear tight jeans, no rock shades. But plies has been wearing shades the last <laughs> seven years. I mean, times saying, change. Like, I said the same thing about wearing Crocs. Now I wear Crocs. You they ain't changed. In, another in 2003, too. we was wearing big ass t shirts. Now we wear fitted t shirts. You ain't exactly. selling no big ass jackets, huh? Exactly. True. Them bucket That's hats funny. came back. Yeah, but you can continue. <laughs> My bad, I cut you off. Nah, you good. But another thing too, some of the rappers they turn into that. You know what I'm saying? They may turn into what we call a real. Cause if you think about it, what he just described is Tupac. Tupac was what in uh, performance art school, doing Julia, ballet, yeah. writing poetry. Then when he got around Suge Knight, now he's shooting police officers. Now he's fighting people in in Vegas. Well, you know, the police yeah, officer stuff was before, the was before death row. Huh? The police officer stuff was before death row. Yeah, but you can turn into it, you know what I mean? But like, yeah, but Tupac said out his own mouth, I never had a record until I became a professional artist, until I yeah. became a celebrity. I didn't have a record before that. Yeah, and he said he used to just rap about what was going on. Going to, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And But with the Plies thing, I think another thing that got Plies messed up and fell out of the mainstream, that whole situation with 40 Glock and them. Was that with, mm. was that the same one with Jamie Foxx? Yeah, and see when that when that story first came out, I thought it was funny just because I'm into <laughs> the entertainment. But when you look at when you really look at it, right? Because I remember the comments on YouTube, bro, like it was yesterday. People on this talk, some, oh, I wouldn't have ran, I would have did this, la da da da. But I'm like, dude, you in a whole nother city and state where you're not from. You got thirty or forty niggas coming over there, nigga. I'd have ran too. Have you out your fucking mind? I'd have ran too. Jamie Foxx, when he tell the story about how he stayed, if you listen to him, what he's actually saying, it's a reason why he stayed. He's from, he said it, I'm from LA. Well, he's not from LA, but he's been in LA. He understands the politics of it. Let me figure out what the fuck is going on. Fucking Plies is not from there. He ain't got time to try to figure out the politics. I'm getting the fuck out of here. 30, 40 niggas coming, we gone. No one to hold them and one to fold them. You know what I mean? Like, you got to be smart about shit, bro. It ain't about trying to be the toughest nigga out here. 
That's just like me moving to Houston. I don't know nothing about the streets here. I don't know about their politics bread. here. I'm not trying to learn about their politics here. So if, so if I'm somewhere and I see 30, 40 niggas coming my way, yes, I'm finna find somewhere else to go. I'm finna cross the street. I'm finna enter a building. I'm finna go do something. I'm finna get the fuck out their way. I'm not trying to see what they want to do. By that yo, point, it's I too late. It real, can I keep it real with you guys, yo? We all grew up in the same generation. You yeah. know, I got I got some good jobs in my life. And I started saying, yo, let's go to these places, bro. Nah, yo, that's a white people place. I don't want to go over there. And they want to chill in the hood with money. For what? We got bread. We don't have to chill in the hood, son. We hey, what's that mean? On... What's that mean with Jay in the back? It's it's actually two of them. It's one with Jay and it's one with Jeezy sitting in the back seat of they uh Maybachs. And the thing they say is, y'all forgot that the goal is to get out the hood. <laughs> so when you get money, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed Hallelujah. to go explore because it's more than just your neighborhood. Once you go explore what's out there and you see that there's other places and there's better things to go see, it motivates you to go stay out the hood. But a lot of those guys don't get the motivation to get out their hood. Don Pete, we were in the military together. I, I'm not going to say I'm from the hood, but I'm from mm -hmm. poverty stricken place. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I don't really know exactly where you're from, but do you think the military and traveling the world, being in different environments around different people may have affected the way that you move as far as what we just talked about, like having bread, wanting to go somewhere else, or would you still chill in the hood? You get what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being, yeah, being in the military, of course, it changes everything. Like you going to Dubai and you're around Twice. different people twice <laughs> you're around different people you in italy you know what i'm saying you getting exposed to so much stuff that you ain't the same person no more and when you go back home which i tell people like i i got stationed in florida to go back home every weekend that's the that's the guy that's 18 in the military if you can go home every weekend you would but i found out quick when you go home i had a home where they used to say hey bro every time you come down here uh, you come the weekend, I don't got no money. I said, well, I come down here every weekend, so you'll never got no money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn. And then you realize, you realize, and this is why I get away from, this kind of why I got away from going back home, going back home. Because when you go, when you in the military, like fresh out of high school, when you go back home, everybody's in college or got a regular job, you got the most money. You might be the only person with a car. You talking about stuff like I'm, I'm asking, dude, hey, how, how college going? You at that scholarship, they don't even want to talk about college. They want to say, hey, yeah, whatever, but you went to Italy, right? You went to Dubai. What, what's that like? You know what I'm saying? So I never really thought about going back. Like I, I go to my neighborhood, but not just to really sit there purposely or say, hey, my whole weekend I'm going down there to sit. Nah, I wasn't on that. But it kind of make you get away from it because if you're the only person got money, either – you're going to be doing stuff by yourself or you're going to be paying for everybody to do regular stuff you want to do. Shit, nice. or you become a target. Fuck that. That too. That's what the scary you, part. Can you explain your transition, like getting out the military and getting into the clothing thing? <laughs> that shit was rough. Now I'm playing, but <laughs> the, clothing, the clothing came seven years after I got out the military. But um, just getting straight out the military, I ain't have no money saved. You know, mm -hmm. people be saying, oh, yeah, I'm about to say, I ain't have no money saved. I was done with it because it wasn't based off of work no more. And you know, you knew, you knew me. Like, I worked to everybody that was in our department. Polo gang, you heard? <laughs> that was another life, huh? Yeah, we wore a lot of polo. So that's why we ended up saying that me and a couple of guys was with. But uh, so the first couple of years, struggled you know working two jobs going to school sleeping four hours a day like every day like weekend I'm still working one job so I did that for about pretty much did that for about three years well actually I worked offshore one year then I did that for two years and then this is why relationships is the most important thing at the end of the year you remember Foster right yeah Foster said, hey, hey, Don, hey, I'm getting this job. You know, it's going to make this amount. Let's say it's, it's going to make 100000 a year. They pay for this. They pay for that. They pay for that. So me, I ain't one of those guys that's like, hey, get me in before you get in. 
So I just like, oh, that's what's up. That's good for you. Left it alone. But then he came back and said, hey, I told four guys about it that I worked with at Cermat, and none of them ain't want it. I said, they ain't want it. I said, shit, put me on. He like, you want to do it? I'm like, yeah, I want to do it. And uh, that's how I got into it in 2017. And then I started making more money. And then I would stay home like eight months out of the year. But I still was making good money. So I was like, you know, instead of complaining about how much I'm working, I need to figure out a way to make money without my company. Mm. That's how it all happened. So well, shout out to you doing it legit. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's a fact, man. We need more of that. <laughs> we need more of that, man. But people just not knowing, like, it's so many jobs, like, in our industry where people making real money and it ain't like it ain't like people got degrees and stuff. We're just not knowing. You know what I'm saying? Tech it's skills, kind of. Like huh? engineering skills, kind of. Yeah, or like mill right. Like anybody can sign up to be a mill right. So those guys y'all see with the big trucks lifted up and got all the guns and going hunting, those are mill rights. Mm. They they work for me and still make more money than me. They making 150 a year, 100 and 200,000 a year with no some of them don't even got uh diplomas. Yeah. <laughs> People don't in know Houston about. put my boy on, son. Yeah, that's a fact. We, we don't that. we don't know about it. <laughs> We don't know about it. Like I just got uh, a, I just got one of our homeboys. He on with G now. He gonna be he. He said he gonna start in a couple of months, but I just got one of one of our homeboys on recently. He gonna be a machinist, a uh, prince, hundred thousand a year, chilling. Shout out to you reaching back, not That's being a up. sucker. Shout yeah. out to you, so you can smile. It's a good smile. Uh, I done done it these last three years. I done got three three people on from from the military. Three years yeah. back, back, so yeah, that's no, that's what's up. We got Jadakiss getting his catalog back from Diddy. He said he's gonna sell it as soon as he gets it back. He said I'm selling it. How you feel about that? When is he supposed to get it back? We talking about Diddy? <laughs> Come on, man. Did he tell niggas anything? When is he supposed? Did he get it back already, or he waiting to get it? I guess he's waiting. He's nah, in the queue. he ain't he's selling in the, shit. <laughs> he's in the queue. He ain't selling shit, and he should have kept that to himself, because now Diddy has been the fucking around and sold it to somebody else. Maybe that's why he said he was selling it as a joke. <laughs> yeah, like, he ain't give that it to shit. me, I'm selling it. He ain't getting that shit. I'd be surprised if Diddy actually give it to him. He ain't getting that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck smart. you think Diddy's still rich, man? He eating off all them niggas kind of laws, bro. <laughs> yeah, Man, he ain't like, that shit. like I'm from the south. Like, is, is Jada Kiss considered retired or he ain't retired? Like, what, nah, what he's, he's still active. active. He's still nah, active. He ain't retired. He ain't retired. He's active. Me, as like, hell. Se- selling your your masters is like you leaving. Like, that's like you get a hundred million. Like, Luane got a hundred million, and you walking away and about to do some other stuff. I think he's on that path. Okay. Like okay. I mean, he is older. Maybe than, that's why he said that. Then. Yeah, he's older than <laughs> you know. They all in their forties, bro. Come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they all they damn near pushing fifty. You know everybody you think... in their forties because Wayne was the youngest one. He just turned forty. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they don't want to rap forever. I, I'm sure they love it. They got a passion in their soul to do it. But I'm sure they want to sit back, like hold, get a J Cole. You know what I mean? Yeah. But is selling your cattle is selling your okay? So is selling your catalog is selling your masters? I'm assuming that yeah, publishing. Well, the rights to it, licensing, that's what I'm assuming. I mean, because all of that, so all of that combined is all of that, but what you, what you just said. So if I sell my catalog, I'm selling my publishing, masters, all that shit. That's yeah. everything I know. So I'm not getting no money from this at all no more, other than what they just paid me. Yeah. Okay. But you can make Because I know the Dream sold his shit too. Yeah. I think Dream's like one of the first ones that made the headlines of selling his shit. Future just sold his. So yeah, Future just sold his shit as well. It really don't matter though, because once they make the new music, they own the new music. They just got the old stuff. Exactly. Yeah, so fact. but I mean, the old shit is usually the classic shit though. That's, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's shit. That's usually the ones that's worth the most money. Like I don't know if I'm yeah. gonna sell my classic games. shit, bro. Yeah, because people gonna use it for movies, commercials, TV shows. You know what I mean? Ads, all kind of shit. Yeah, but I mean, if you, I don't know, if you feel like you can get more money off of it right now than you can over the years, and I guess it makes sense. I, I guess one hundred and fifty, one hundred and fifty M's. I, I mean, shit, motherfucker, pay me one hundred fifty M's. I might give up my shit too. I might though. That's a that's a big might. 
It depends how much it's worth. Jada it depends on how much of my music you still playing, because you got songs that's forever being used. Motherfuckers All still using Ice Ice Baby. Baby. Yo, niggas are still using Ice Ice Baby, Vanilla what, Ice, bro. What else he they wrote got? a lot of stuff, though, that, that oh, I didn't even know he wrote, so I Victory. seen that verse. I'm like, he wrote that? Victory, God, yeah. yeah. Sun don't shine he got long. a lot of songs that's hard that he didn't even rap. He just wrote them. <laughs> well, Jada Kiss Mace wrote a lot of shit for Diddy, so yeah, you would think Mace would be paid, but the way he talking, I think mean, Diddy fucked that nigga over on the publish. And then he did it to Fabio. Fam. From the best. Nah, I don't know. I don't that's know. Legit. When I was nigga that the Fabio shit, though, I think what he did with Fabio was kind of like not a bad deal, if you think about it. When he first signed him, Fabio wasn't nobody. So yeah, you got like a little low ball number. But he went and got him the big number deal. Yeah, he was just a punk smoke friend. That was it. <laughs> yeah, basically, like yeah. nigga, you just one of them woo niggas or whatever the fuck they call themselves. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So it was like he got you a big deal though. So what? Fifty thousand? It's true. And then he turned around and got you a big deal. So what difference does it make? Man, be honest, like when you get that low money, you're supposed to be on tour. Like Glorilla, that bit been on tour Fact. all damn year. Like, you bro, and I fuck with her and her homegirls. They all hard to me. Bro, she hard. She they hard. all hard to me. I fuck with all of them. It's like two more than need record deals. I think three of them got one already. It's like two more left. Oh, okay. Because she signed with Gotti. The other one signed with QC. Yeah. And then one, well, she ain't really signed to like a, a label label. She signed to an artist that signed to a label. That's uh, uh, another one. She signed with a Pooh Oh, okay. But oh, you man. know, Pooh signed to Gucci. Yeah. But she signed to Pooh But it's like two left that need record deals. But they all hard. I fuck with all of them for real. Man, I told people about Pooh like a year ago. My homeboys was laughing at it. Like, bro, I don't know. I'm like, all right, bro, he go. No, the first song I heard was the one he had with Dirk. And I thought that shit was hard. I, I was a fan since. <sighs> Pooh yeah. Shiesty hard. I mean, so he's in a fucked up situation, but music wise, he hard. Free Pooh Shiesty. And then them Gucci uh compilation albums, they was killing that yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. His his squad was straight and just he went. Yeah, he got some real real street niggas, so Pugiano they all in trouble. Went to jail. Everybody <laughs> going to jail. Like. They 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 a little bit too real. <laughs> Be fake, man. Be a fake rapper and get nah, your money. Nah, you gotta be fake. But go party. Once you make it, <laughs> go get once these you bitches. make it, you gotta get away from that shit, bro. Go pop them bottles. Go cop them cribs. Go get some pizza like Lil Yachty. Leave the streets alone, fam. Nah, facts. Or do it like Lil Baby shit. Lil Baby smart with his shit. Jada Kiss said Kanye won't stay canceled, but he should apologize. He been apologizing. He just apologized to uh, the Floyd. Is that George Floyd family? And then he'll apologize to the Jews like last week, right? I don't still say, look at it like don't this. Don't say Jews, say the Jays, man. <laughs> <laughs> I still look at it like this though. What did he say wrong to the to the Jays? He kept it too real. <laughs> kept it but too what real. did he say? But my question is, what did he say wrong? I'm still looking for that. What yeah. did he say wrong? I've, I've been asking him. people, I've been asking people this since it first started, and can't nobody answer it. What did he say that was wrong? He said the same thing that everybody talks about amongst themselves, but <laughs> you still ain't like, answered the question. I said, "What did no, he no, say no, wrong?" Let, let me finish. Is no, when no, you no. when you're in the public eye is like we were speaking about earlier. You can't say everything in front of everybody because it's not that kind of conversation. <laughs> and then shit like this happens, and then you're like, "Damn, I don't get it." But when I go to work, I don't be like, "Yo, what up, nigga? What's going on, son? What we doing later?" You know what I mean? Hey, how you doing? I love you. You need some help. Like it's that's like nah, I get bro. what you're saying, bro. But what did he say wrong about them? Is what I'm trying to get everybody to answer. If you look at the list that he I just say seen, nothing wrong. If you look at the list I just seen, Jewish people are in the forefront of everything. We all know this; they own everything. So <laughs> and that's just, all he said. It's like me saying, "Yo, fuck the cops." And then I go outside; they start fucking with me. It's obvious, you know what I mean? I, I certain <laughs> things you just gotta leave alone. Bro, the only to, thing Kanye unless said you're ready to be Jews a martyr, there's certain things. Yeah, but unless you're ready to be a martyr, there's certain things that you just like. Whoop. Okay, but I what's know. wrong with saying they run everything? That's nothing new. We all know that. Yeah, but... he's not telling us something we don't know. So what did he say that is wrong? The only thing I disagree with him about is the he throwing all that other shit out there. You know, the, the bullshit, to shut him the bullshit antics to get the public to keep talking about him. That's the only thing I find that's wrong. But when it comes to the Jays, what did he say wrong about them? He didn't 
say anything disrespectful about them. He just said they running shit and they stopping me from doing certain shit that I'm trying to do. And they proving that point by shutting him down every time he try to do something. They reaching out to the to niggas like Mav Hoffa. Hey, turn, you better take that shit down. I think Kanye needs to be more strategic in his moves rather than going at them head on because he's probably not going to win that, in my opinion. He is being strategic. He is being strategic. He really is. If you think about it, right? So everybody made this joke because all of us that say that we stand with Kanye, myself included, I stand with him. It ain't even about being from Chicago. I just stand for what he's saying mm-hmm. or what he's trying to do, rather. Um, his contracts, right? The contracts that he got with Adidas and all them other motherfuckers he got contracts with, they pretty much own what, he, what he's doing. They got exclusive rights to the shit he's doing. This whole time, for the last fucking five, six years, he's been preaching ownership and wanting to own his own shit and do his own thing. Mm-hmm. He can't leave. If he leave on his own, they own his shit. Name, brand, all that shit. But if they drop him, if they say, hey, we dropping you, we ain't fucking with you no more, we not doing this, we ain't doing nothing, we don't, you going too far, we not fucking with you. You know what? He owns all his shit now. Because you're not fucking with nothing. If you're not fucking with, they still got his designs, but they can't use the name. They got to take the name off. They got to take the brand off. That means he owned his name again. He owned his brand again. That's what he wanted. Fuck the design. Kanye could design some new shit. And niggas gonna go fuck with it. Yeah. That's the whole part that we talking about when we say Kanye is being strategic and what he's doing. He knew what the fuck he was doing. If I get them to stop fucking with me, I can own my shit again. So now maybe all the I other just nonsense don't... he's speaking, I don't agree with. But that particular situation, business wise, I get what he's doing. All right, so maybe I'm gonna take this stance. I don't think he could win. The Jays killed Jesus, and I think they could kill Jesus too. <laughs> That's what I mean. I mean, what, I, yeah. I, I fought, what he thinks, I believe. That's okay. That's why he's apologizing. Do I think he can win? No, I don't. That's why he's apologizing. He knows he's not going to win. But I hope he wins. But it's, but we it's, all hope he wins. But people, because of, it's like Dame. Like, right? Dame Dash, right? Let's look at Dame Dash. Dame Dash says a lot of real shit that can help a lot of people. But because of the way he deliver it, everybody look at him like an asshole. Right? He is an asshole. No, he's not an asshole. They ain't just tell it like it is. That's my but guy. instead of people listening to the message, they too busy yeah, listening to how it's being delivered. Yeah, they I don't like the way he said it. Well, fuck yeah. the way he said it. Did you hear what the fuck he said? He's an asshole. Bro, no, fuck he's, that. Did you but he's hear keeping what, it real, though. <laughs> did you hear what he said? Fuck how he said it. Did you hear what he said? Because what he said can help you. But you too focused on how he said it. Stop being a little bitch. Stop being sensitive. And listen to what the fuck he just said you heard it can help you and that's what kanye is doing kanye is showing people hey i'm telling y'all they run everything we should be more focused on our ownership but because he's saying little nonsense shit that's the shit that everybody getting that's what that's what's getting everybody attention but they're not focused on him telling them like yo we need to own our own shit for real we could do this without them but they own everything we gotta take that shit back how you feel they focus on all the negative shit um if you if you pay attention, I mean, what we just talked about, he so like Adidas, they can still sell his shoes, the the shoes that's already been made, without his name. So indirectly, he sold his masters, but yeah. everything new he, that come out, he owns it. So big thing about like he said in the interview, I said, well, I wore a shirt that said "White Lives Matter," just like when a white person wears "Black Lives Matter." Why can't I do it? You know what I'm saying? But they look at, oh, you can't do that. So one thing they got to realize, and I'm a Gemini too, when people start doing a lot of wild stuff, I, I go look up their birthday, right? <laughs> for real, for real. Because me, I'm, I'm a Gemini. And I, I'm, I'm going to tell you all this, right? I'm, I'm going to tell you all this. Gemini's is probably the one horoscope that, that really keeps up with horoscope, right? So I was like, why is he saying that? I'm going to tell you, everybody that's a Gemini, like, I'm a May Gemini. Most of the famous people are June Geminis. They do mm-hmm. shit to get a rise out of you. They do shit to get a rise. Kanye West, June Gemini. Donald Trump, Tupac. Tupac. Biggie, Biggie is a May Gemini. That's why he's quiet. That's why I'm mm-hmm. kind of quiet. Ice Cube, Prince. All of these is June Geminis. They do mm-hmm. shit to get a rise out of you. Ice Cube. What didn't he have what 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 song you wrote with NWA? Fuck the police or whatever? 
Yeah. Kanye West, Donald Trump say whatever the fuck you want to say. Tupac said whatever you want to say. So once oh. you realize they Gemini's, I just laugh because I don't take it personal. I'm like, it's a story behind what they're doing. Or they're doing it to get a, a rise out of you. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So I never take nothing personal that he says or Donald Trump says because a Gemini looks crazy until they explain what they're doing. But if you don't know they Gemini, you're just like, oh, he's crazy. He's crazy. Once I seen Donald Trump's birthday, I was like, he doing all this shit to get a rise out of people. And it's been working. He got a whole cult following. And then people that don't like him still keep up with him. And then now Joe Biden not doing good. Now people that jo- voted for Joe Biden said, oh, I think I might vote for Trump next time. Oh, so I've seen a lot of that, too. Once you realize that's a Gemini, you know, it. think about Kodak Black. Kodak Black is a Gemini. Uh-huh. Do, do you notice everybody I name do shit to get a rise out of people? But they don't really live like that. They just do shit to get a rise out of y'all. God. So once you figure that out, you're just like, ah, we just talking. That's why you usually got to let shit play out. And I, I've been telling people, they look at, we in a generation now, ever since social media really, really took off, we in an era now of um, people don't want to read and people don't want to watch full clips. People got real short attention spans. Definitely. So they take the little clickbait videos and they go, oh, he said that. Motherfucker, but it's like, did you watch the whole video? You don't even know what context, <laughs> you don't even know what context was used when he said what he said. Yeah. Oh, that's a fact. When you see a headline, you run off with that. Well, did you read the whole article? You didn't read the whole article. So now you got people making judgment calls off of clickbait videos and headlines when they didn't even watch the whole video. They didn't read the whole article. <laughs> now you sound stupid to somebody who read the whole thing. Now, if you got two people who both read the headline or two people who both watched the clickbait going back and forth about something, then that's different. But when you a person that only read the headline, or you a person that only watch the clickbait videos, to a person like me who gonna read the whole thing and watch the whole video, you sound stupid. You didn't read the And book, at some point, I'm not even gonna keep it. going back and forth with you. And I'm gonna find out that you only read the headline or only watched the clickbait because I'm gonna say something and you're gonna be like, oh, I don't remember that happening. Yeah, you didn't watch the whole video. You That just let me know. Or you didn't read the whole article. So I'm, I'm not even gonna argue with you no more. You you now invalid. You're not even valid no more, fam. I'm done. Sure. Yeah, wanna if you get can't hold if you video? can't hold the argument with me, I'm not even finna watch. I'm not even finna go back and forth with you, bro. Yeah. Y'all, y'all ready to get into the second video? Yeah, yeah we can yeah. do that. Yeah, go ahead. I think we got an A45 native. Uh oh. <laughs> you featured on it. Jay nah. stay with an A45 video. <laughs> Come on, you gotta put it on for you people, dog. I feel you, man. We got Sims straight out of Kingston, A45 shit. Shout out to Don P. Shout out to Double Shot Apparel. Shout out to King yes, Van. Sir. Shout out to Shot Town. Yes, we got Sims Forever Freestyle. Jay's music. Again, it is Jay today. Why well, stay fly for the 845? Get your mind ready. Get your ground ready. The way you're going to shine when the time's right. That was Sims Forever. I wasn't expecting a girl track because he's normally a guy that got bars. Uh, what would you guys think of that? That you, you know him personally? Like That boy sound like a young Jay. Nah, I don't know him in real life. Okay, I, I, I was like, nah, that boy Jay probably goes right, right in that, boy. That shit, it did that, sound like something Jay would have wrote. Bro, that that shit. Wrote. <laughs> That's the first we thing just, I thought, too, listening to it. Nah, we, just wrote, wrote it we, we all influenced by the same things out here. It's kind of like how every Chicago rapper sound the same. But nah, nah, I can't, I can't take nah, that. Nah, nah, <laughs> you ain't just say that. You ain't just say that, bro. I ain't say that to get deep into it. That was just my explanation. Nah, that nigga sound like you, though. He sound, he, like, he sound like you. He sound. rap like y'all got the same flow. He it's he, real. It's real calm. You he trying I mean? to get mad a little bit though, but yeah, you that's, know, that's, that's, that's cool the, the whole time. That's the eight four five style, bro. I can't take credit for that. Okay, the only thing I'm confused on though the 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 track itself. I know that song, but I can't think of the name. I don't know the beat either. <laughs> no, I know it. I just can't think of the original song. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can't think of the name. But, I heard so I'm trying track. to figure out who is Sam's and who is Friday. It says Sam's featuring Friday. Oh, Only maybe one it's a person rap. Maybe Friday is the sample. Forever? Does that ring a bell? No. Nah. I think that's... 
off the top of my head, the only forever song I know is the Drake record. That's what I think. I think it is. I don't know. Off the that top, means- just off the top of my head, just thinking. The only forever record I know is the Drake record. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it says Bad Sam's man, featuring Friday. Like... So I was expecting two people, but only one person rapped and it was over. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Maybe that was the singer in the in the sample. But that's what I'm saying. That sample, the the beat, it sounds like a song that's already on the radio. Like it something I heard be. already. It could be. I don't know. I'm not musical like that. I think that's on a little baby album. Mm. Maybe that's why it sounds familiar because I heard it recently. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It that's says Sam baby, featuring yeah. Friday. Yeah, it's just a freestyle. That's why he put Forever Freestyle. Maybe Little B Forever or Little Baby Forever. I don't know, man. It was cool though. The record was cool. I fucked with it. Yeah. I, it could have been mixed better, but it was cool. What did you think, Don P? It sound like you, bro. Yeah, he said that when we came back. Dang, it sound, it do sound like you, so. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sound like you should sign on that boy. Sound like you, but try to be know. more angry. You know, he so tried. I didn't to, want to hear that. <laughs> no, he but he's a little though. confused though. Honestly, he sounded a little bit confused on the record. Like he he wanted to keep talking about women, but then he kind of like tried to steer off into the street a little bit. But then he brought it back to the woman. So he sounded confused. Like he didn't know what to do. He just went back and forth playing ping pong and shit. Right, but the record that. was hot though. But I'll say this: it was I'll it was hard it. though. It was hard. Yeah, I listened I'll to lyrics. It. He had bars, but he had bars on him. Uh, mm-hmm. Off of that, we got consequence going at Talib Kweli. Talib Kweli got the whole Connecticut dissing him, and now he has consequence <laughs> tagging along, and consequence is standing up for Jesus. Did you guys see that? Consequence, consequence, consequence. consequence. That's the homie from um, that's Q Tip cousin or some shit, right? I think consequence is from Shot Town. Consequence is not from Chicago. (laughs) He is a a big ghostwriter. Oh yeah. Wait, consequence is wait. Am I getting him confused? Is consequence the dude that got into it with 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 uh Joe Button? Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's not from Chicago, fam. That's y'all. Oh, oh yeah, (laughs) he's from New York, Queens, Queens, Queens. Sorry. Yeah, he's from New York. Maybe I thought he was because he was always with Ye, but he's sticking up for Yeezy. Yeah, him and Ye been cool for, for years. Yeah. But what's the issue with Talib, Kwali? What he what's wrong with that? What's up? Uh, at this minute, I don't even remember, bro. I'm smacked. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was basically what we was talking about earlier. And then he was just capitalizing off of it. No, uh, well, it, that could be personal. I mean, like you say, Ye is boy, he probably just sticking up for him, but I mean, Talib Kweli got a, a he got a reason to say anything he wanted to say against Kanye because Kanye said something about him first, and it was unprovoked. Drink champs, and he said that he was never really cool with them niggas like that anyway. But it's like, fam, what? Y'all was rocking, right. fam. Like Kanye was rocking with Talib him. Kweli for years, so it's like, why all of a sudden now you talking about something you was never really rocking them? Just getting the rise out of you. That's it. I'm telling you. Yeah, exactly. So, Kweli, but but Kweli got a he Kweli has a a reason to say what he want to say. But then, consequences, consequences got to fall back. Like, bro, at this point, it ain't even about you. You ain't got to stand up for Ye. At least not against him. Well, if you are gonna stand up for Ye, try to get some more people that's against Ye and don't believe in what he's trying to do. Get get on them. Try to get them to get on Ye's side and understand what he's doing. Fuck another famous person. He got enough famous people coming at him trying to get us to not back what he's saying. Come at the regular folks. Try to get the regular folks because it's us that's the customers anyway. Ain't no rich nigga buying no Kanye shit. No fucking way. Ain't none of them niggas buying that shit. They get that shit free. Yep, they wearing sketches. Like Kanye, Kanye sent them a box. It. Kanye sent this person a box. Yeezy sent this person a box. Adidas got deals with this person. So they sent them a box. Ain't none of them niggas buying that shit. Regular exactly. folks is buying that shit. We all buying that shit. Bro, keep it a buck. Did y'all I make Boosie no pay idea. for that jacket? Oh, that jacket? Nah. Yeah, See, that's what I'm saying. And there's nothing against that. That's not what I'm trying to bring up. But that's nothing against that. But what I'm saying is the rich folks don't pay for that shit. So if they wear it, they didn't pay Product for that. placement. Exactly. Which is why I respect it. But at the end of the day, don't come at the famous person because they're not paying for it anyway. <laughs> that's true. You know what I mean? We pay for it. So if Consequence got something to say, talk to the regular customers that's that's buying Kanye shit or bought Kanye shit and no longer want to support him. 
that's the niggas you go get. But why you not supporting him no more? What did he say? What's what you he, think is he wrong? Probably with what wasn't he supporting him to begin with. You know what I mean? Yeah. We got Akon. He took out a $1 billion loan from China. He paid it back to build his city in Africa. He said this time he's taking $5 billion. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Time out. <laughs> they gave him one. How many? How much? $1 billion. And he was able to pay that shit back? He paid it back already, yes. God damn. Yeah, he got an Akon, bro. He got an unlimited uh, credit line with, with China. But the fact he was able to pay it back. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> and now he's taking out five B's, not five M's. Shit. When it comes down to it, doing. Yeezy wants to open his own community with the economy. Akon City. Where would you rather live? Oh, Akon City. I know yeah. I've been taking up for Kanye, but Akon, because that nigga finna be on some real Black Panther shit. <laughs> and that's what I that's what I meant when I said being more strategic. Because Akon doesn't do clown shit, but he's making the moves. And <laughs> and I feel like Yeezus Peace could do the same thing because he's smart enough, he's creative enough. But like maybe you said, maybe he's too much of a Gemini and he wants to rise out of people. Because No, he could. The problem because is because Akon Ye took the one billy ownership. and we didn't know about it till he paid it back. Yeah, but no, it's a difference. <laughs> Yeezy would have been like, Y'all got the one billy. I'm no, worth no, no, more no, no, than no. you and everybody in the no, room. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jay, you getting it confused, bro. Listen. No, I'm talking shit. I'm talking the, shit. The difference is Kanye has shit that he made up himself. He designed all this shit. He made all this shit from the ground up. But when he signed those deals, it's kind of like a, it's kind of basically like the music business. You come up with all them songs. You wrote the shit. But when you sign a deal, you now have to include those songs in your record deal. Now the record up, the record company owns it. And that's what Ye did. With Akon, he's not selling us nothing. Akon strictly just want to go build his own city. So he don't have to worry about trying to get ownership. He don't have nothing. He's not trying to promote anything. He has a whole city. No, 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 no. But it's a difference when you're trying to promote something you're trying to sell. Kanye is promoting shit he's trying to sell. Remember when he was on Sway and he got to yelling at Sway, you ain't got the answers and all that shit? That's when he was trying to break into the fashion business and Sway was telling them, dude, do it yourself. Your Kanye is going to sell regardless. Kanye didn't want to do that. He wanted to be up there with the big names. And he felt like if a big name co-signed him, he's in. So when he finally got those co-signs, he's pretty much gave away his shit. He wants it back. With Akon, he's not trying to sell us nothing. He's just low-key trying to build his own city. And he's yeah. like, yo, look. But I mean, you got to pay I'm rent in the city. city. You have to... You have to pay rent in the city you have to lease property you have to start your business and whatever so he's selling Bro, but you're something not, like but he's not selling it the like fact this. that he said but the fact that he's saying i have my own city we're building it he's akon people gonna flock to it regardless the same with kanye he didn't have to sign those deals with adidas he didn't have to sign a deal with nike at first before adidas he didn't have to do those he's kanye nigga if you sell it we're buying it true he got look his Twitter shit, online. Look at what the shit look like, bro. I'm a I'm real big on shit has to look right for me to for me to want to buy it. Kanye mm. shit don't look right to me. I don't want to buy none of that shit. Mm. But I will now that he own 100 percent of it. So whatever he decides to put it out, I go buy it now. Transition off of that to topic, Don P. Do you design your own shit? Like, do I make it or do I just make the the, the design? Look? Yeah, yeah, I make yeah. all the designs. All of this come out of my mind, you know. So that's, what's up. that's why, like, I got the hats too that say "Build Black Wall Street Again." I think that's Akon is doing it, fam. Yeah, but it's gonna be in Africa. How many people about to go over there? Yeah, we gotta do that shit here. But it happened here first. It happened. Yeah, in we gotta Tulsa, do that shit here, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. It had another one in uh, and they bombed that shit in North Carolina. Yeah, oh. they bombed it based off of. Uh, a white girl said she got raped by a, guy, a black guy in the elevator. Emmett Till all over again. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. I didn't even know that part of the story. That's the real story. She said she got raped by a black guy in the elevator, and they, they bombed the whole damn city. They used, <laughs> they used some military shit to, yeah. to do that just because she said she got raped. Yeah, I always I thought they were just hating on black people. I didn't know it was that story. That, that was the real story. 
They had mm. another uh they had another Black Wall Street in uh North Carolina and Durham. Mm. And people don't know this, like New York and North Carolina got a connection because I read I read the Dapper Dan book. A lot of people from like North Carolina moved to New York like in the 50s and 60s. That's why Bumpy Johnson, Frank Lucas, they all from North Carolina. Yeah. So a lot of the yeah, that's why that's why it is the way it is. Cause when I went to uh Raleigh a couple of weeks ago. Everybody, I'm like, hey, where you from? I'm from New York. I'm from New York. I'm like, damn, y'all be dying like that. Yeah, but a lot it of makes my sense. friends move out there too. Yeah, it makes sense. That's why North Carolina got a connection because in the '60s or '50s, they all moved up north for whatever oh, new whatever. I didn't know that. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. We definitely far, need to be, we need to bring that shit back to America though. As far as ownership of your brand, if you were in like a Yeezy situation. Would you sign that kind of deal? Will I sign that? I will only sign that kind of deal if I was exiting. You know what I'm saying? Just to get money up front to make something bigger. That's why I have. Mm. That's why I have Bill Black Wall Street again. And then you see the logo. Then you see Felber Rose. So mm. really, if somebody was to buy Double Shot, you only getting this. I still got this. I still got Felber Rose. I What's your favorite another- drink? Is is it Jack Daniels? Nah, that ain't my favorite drink. drink. I I always thought the Jack was a play on that because I always see you drinking the Jack. Yeah, so what happened, I went to the distillery. So that's how I ended up getting a lot of the Jacks and I learned the history of Jack Daniels. People don't know Jack Daniels learned how to make whiskey from a black dude. Yeah, I remember that. I've seen like a documentary or some shit like that. Yeah, his name is Uncle Nearest. He got his own whiskey and he was like a slave at the time when he was teaching. Jack Daniels about it when he was 10 years old. So if somebody bought double shot and really is it's strategic, you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about the Gemini's. They they strategic. We we think we think probably five times more than the average person. People seen it and it was like, man, why why you don't got a black king? I said, well, really, if you look at it, you shouldn't even see a white king. You should see a playing card. That's how I seen picture, it when I first did it, it. This picture is off a playing card. Yeah. Is that a king or a jack? That's the jack. It's really supposed to be the jack, but somebody seen it. It's like I had one person see it, and uh, I forgot. I think I was in Arkansas, and it was like, oh, I like that crown. In. They said double shot of crown. So whatever you make up mm. in your mind, people see mm. different stuff. Some people don't even see the gun until it gets to their house. I'm like, you ain't know you had a gun? They're like, no, I ain't even know he mm. had a gun. I'm like, yeah, he, he, he got a gun. He holding a gun in his hand. But what's the symbolism behind the jack? I've never noticed the gun either looking at all the pieces. <laughs> so really, really what happened was I had um I've been playing spades since I was 10. And I started. I'm, I'm, I'm really good at spades. Yeah, I'm, I'm better at spades than dominoes. You okay. That's a fact. <laughs> so it's kind of ironic how it comes together because I actually seen a, a picture. It was a 3D painting of like it was like a jack, jack card inside of a glass of Coke or whatever. And the body came out of it and was stirring it with the little red little thing that they usually put in drinks. And it was stirring it on a cruise, I seen. I'm like, that's a dope thing. So that's how I came up with the concept. But also, I've been drinking and playing space since I was 10. So it just make it make sense, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I did it because I was like, man, everybody that's seen a playing card, it's something familiar. If you read the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, it's having something people familiar with. So mm-hmm. everybody done seen a Jack's face, but I told the guy, make a whole body and put him sitting on the glass. And then put mm. two, two bullet holes in the glass since it's double shot. And mm. put two T's on it since it's double shot. So I just overdid it. And um, and yeah, so pretty much that's how, that's how it all came out. But like I said, if somebody buy it, they're going to buy a double shot. But I got another collection that I'm coming out with is going to be called the Mansa Musa Collection, which is going to be the Black King, the, the richest man, richest man ever, four hundred yes, billion dollars. Yes, sir. And what I'm going to do is going to be a black face with a king, and then on the sleeve, it's going to have, it's going to have the silhouette of Africa, and then I'm going to put different flags from Africa on it. Mm. So you you see what I'm saying? I, I got a million ideas. So if they buy, they're going to buy a double shot, but they ain't going to buy Felber Rose, uh, Bill Black Wall Street again. Like it's all on the jacket. But really, in reality, down the line, it's three different brands. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's what's up. So really, if, if somebody coming to you, 
they can buy one thing, but they ain't finna get everything. Just like a it's a black billionaire, he sold a tech company, but he didn't sell the building. So they still got to pay him rent for the building. Mm. This dude's a, a billionaire. Yeah, it's smart. That's how you, hey, it, we and Jay was talking about this, off, uh, I didn't say off camera, but when we wasn't recording, it's what you negotiate. You get what you negotiate. Yeah. So you got to break it down. Yeah, y'all can have that, but the building's still mine. <laughs> exactly. So they can get double shot, you know, but that Master Moose is going to be harder because it's going to resonate like a Black King, and then you got Africa, then you got the different shirts, different flags. It's going to resonate both ways, you know what I'm saying? But double shot is friendly because maybe a white person might see me like, oh, that's a white king. But anybody mm. that see you should see a playing card. Yeah. That's why when mm. black people hit me up, like, why you ain't make it black? I'm like, I don't even see a black, I don't even see a white king. I see a playing card. So anybody, like your little kid, if if they done play ID Club or Goldfish, they done seen this before. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So it just makes it it's interesting. Like it's bold. Like he holding a gun. He's sitting on the glass. Like my kids don't wear the mask around their mouth, and they teach you in kindergarten. Like you got to take that mask because he got a gun, or because it say double shot. But you don't know what it is. It's a double shot of success. Hmm. It's a double oh. shot of whatever you wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no. I told right. you the meaning. Of course, two times going harder because of COVID. But you can make up whatever you want it to be. Yo, playing off the name, when you sit at the bar, what is your drink of choice? At the bar, I try. I drink everything. That's why I tell people, like, man, I was in the Navy, man. I drink everything. Give give me 89. Give me gang. Give me unladen. I drink everything. Moonshine, white, brown, whiskey. Don't think I forgot, man. You used to do the Vegas shots when we played pool. I drink everything. That's why I tell people, I drink everything. So, the drink I'm actually drinking now, I had a girl make that for me in West Virginia, and we call it the Amber Alert. You know what I'm saying? So I drink everything. Word, word, word. You still drinking ready? Vegas bombs? Hell no. Uh, that you boy that got nah. grown on me. That you boy got some nah. That shit must have fucked him up. Nah, I'll be on the Ronas. I don't even drink liquor no more. Shout out to yeah. Tito's. That boy grown. That boy that went Manhattan on me, man. Oh, man. Man. Two chains, y'all want to get into this next? Hey, video? hold on, you keep shouting out these liquors, bro. We got to get a deal or something. <laughs> Shout out to us, man. You keep, keep you bands. keep shouting them out, bro. Yeah, I'm gonna keep shouting about. <laughs> Pay me, boy. Shout out to Corona. <laughs> like they ain't dash me doing on that. I'm Spanish. That's a fat pimping video. Pimping, yeah. <laughs> I wear all your shit, fam. If the check is right. Yeah, but until that, then, we gonna get into the next video. I don't know who we have next. We don't listen to everything on the fly. Every ting, man. We got got Boldy Boldy. James. Straight out of Detroit. Flag on the play. Once again, shout out to Double Shot Apparel. Shout out to King Vance. Shot Town. Shout out to Fort Worth, Florida. Did I say that right? Nah, Lake Worth. Lake Worth. You said sorry, Fort sorry, Worth, sorry. nigga. That's Texas. That's Texas. Yeah, that's sorry, 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 sorry. Shout out to Florida. Let's just get into it. Boldy James, play on the flag. Flag on the play. Shout out to Corona. You got me drunk. Jay's Music Corner. Let's get into it. Oh, shit. My love. They say you better sake the sorry, don't get caught without it. I say you better late than never in my darkest hour. I'ma be late to my own funeral recession. I couldn't live with myself if I was six nine. Made it out skin of my tooth in the nick of time. I get ecstatic every time the juice hit my line. Silver lining on the Glock with the step ladder. Switch it to automatic, this bitch shoot like 50 times. In a matter of seconds, it'll shatter your vessels. Shell casings all on the scene, scattered in panic. Left the spittle arm sling, head wrapping a bandage. For all this unpaid debts, that's collateral damage. I don't mean to boast. I don't mean the bread, but I keep a key of coke. Zip like freezer bag. Blew a chalupa with my jeweler playing freeze tag. Real Don truly quarter million dollar bean bag. Still quarterback in plays on the east side. On the flat running routes like a screen pass. In the field, man down, flag on the play. Stand down, cause I know that bag on the way. Watching out for the blitz from the weak side. Had to pull a couple skits from my peeps that. In the field, man down, flag on the play. Stand down, cause I know that bag on the way. 
Skit. Got that blowjob, Betty jacking my fiends up. Down in KY Jelly, they call me Jack in the Bean Store. Wish that my nigga Dale was here for him, I shed a tear. Put out a case of my wet and the fit for Everclear. Why should I ever care? Niggas were never there. Serving niggas on a silver platter, Mr. Belvedere. We went for piss, poor the slum dog, millionaires. All pounds, pills, and birds. Now I'm syllables and verbs. In town to the third, locking towns in the verbs. Ghetto version of the rough childs in the build of birds. 227, lot for Miller, that's a lot of killers. Whole lot of gang shit is mafia, what else? Creatures of the pavement, we don't rock with snitches. Ain't gotta pay to take the hit of out of you myself. Rose mm. from the concrete with the black pedals. Stepping on that bam bam, I had to smack pebbles. Still quarterback and plays on the east side. On the flat running routes like a screen pass. In the field, man, down, flag on the play. Stand down, cause I know that bag on the way. Watching out for the blitz from the weak side. Had to pull a couple skits from my peeps that. In the field, man, down, flag on the play. Stand down, cause I know that bag on the way. Skitty. Once again, it's your boy Jay today. While well, I stay fly for the 845, that was Boldy James, flag on the play. Shout out to King Vance, Shot Town. Shout yes, out sir. to Lake Worth, Florida. I got that right. Dom P, double shot of peril. What y'all think of that? That shit was hard, bro. Like, he started off on some Lupe Fiasco shit, kick push. And I'm like, damn, the boy actually flowing. Like, D Detroit been dropping, been having some artists come out lately. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. It was Eminem, and then it was a decade gap. And then, you know, they've been dropping lately. But, yeah, that boy was straight, though. Shout out to nah, it was smooth. You know what stood out to me, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what stood out to me was when he hit that bag. I was like, why you did that in the video? <laughs> Hey man, look. The line about the, the Jays. Yeah, exactly. He what do you say? I get excited when they call. Why? <laughs> we ain't even gotta go into further discussion. They on my whole block. <laughs> y'all laugh, hey, y'all laughing and smiling. Let me know. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. So you know what I mean? That goes back to that. Nah, yeah, you do. About? That goes back to my mans that say, hey, what they say. Let me, let me give you a little brief history about the Jays, right? <laughs> I came I came home in what 2013, 14, end of it. Yeah. They own my whole neighborhood. They they have a city three 30 miles from here. It's all they shit. If I drive 10 minutes, they own all that shit. I can't talk about the Jays. I might get evicted. You heard? Uh, that's crazy. I'm from New York, bro. They come hey, from man. Brooklyn. They own everything. It's the truth, bro. That's a fact. And that's why I be trying to tell. Well, I ain't going to keep going deep into it, but that's why I keep trying to ask people, what did he say was wrong? <laughs> Only thing my man said was they run everything. That's it. What's that old saying? Uh, Like you either get behind them or you're going to fight them. How, how's it go? I forgot. Hey, what else I have no idea. Against us. Yeah. I, 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 if I'm not soft, but with them, I'm, I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that ain't a battle that, like, like Young Guru said, playing chess. Not everybody starts with the same pieces. I don't have the pieces to play against them, so I don't. They ain't worried about us, no way. We ain't big enough yet. <laughs> I it's just a general idea because I don't think anybody is big enough. You know what I mean? Because they are the it. No, but when I say we're not big enough, I mean like our voices are not loud enough for them to care about what we say. Nah, but I'm saying they're the it. No, no, they is. But they're not going to give a fuck about what we're talking about. It's like going against God, but the man made God. The niggas is Jew. Because we can get into what he said. The real Jews. Exactly. Are... How many um, tribes? The tribes. Um, them niggas is Jew-ish. <laughs> if somebody say I'm black-ish, what does that mean? They're not they're, totally black. They're, they're, they're J-ish. <laughs> I don't want no smoke with the Jays, man. Hey, I, right, I, right. they J-ish. <laughs> that's not the same. That's not the same as saying we Jays. We J-ish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, they fronting. They out here mm -hmm. a lot. It is what it is, though. We all know that. Yeah, it's all good. Benny the Butcher vows to drop a better album than DMX's two debuts in 1990. <laughs> man, come on, stop. I don't stop. think that's possible, but stop. it's a bold statement. What do you guys stop. think? Stop. 
Bro, DMX had Jay Z for them couple of years. Like DMX so more than Jay Z them them couple of years. Like DMX, they better stop playing with this dude, like, man. Stop. That's that's the wrong name. Jay-Z. That's the wrong name. Exactly. It's a bigger name, but go look at them numbers. Like you got everybody, everybody say Jay Z. I don't know why, but go look at them numbers. DMX, everybody say Jay because Jay the Jay the man. You know what I mean? Because Jay is alive. <laughs> Exactly. And Jay was sober the whole time. He should have played. What was that when Tupac and Biggie was rapping? He was just starting. He wasn't nobody. They say he's the greatest rapper to never have a hot year. He is. (laughs) Hey, somebody somebody posted something on Facebook. They was like, hey, this period, DMX had. This period, Lil Wayne had. So when was he? What year was he? No, that's facts. I guess he learned how to play number two and three the best. Jay Z knew that shit though. Think about it in um, what was that song? Um, excuse me, Miss. He said the only dudes moving units is M, Pimp Juice, and us. Shout out to Nelly. Oh so, yeah, they said Nelly had a couple of years. He was killing. He did when Nelly dropped, bro. That boy went diamond. That country <laughs> grandma. Was that country yeah, grandma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavily slept on. Heavily slept on. Yeah, but that's why, that's why, like, in the South, when, when, like, so, in the South, a lot of people from New York moved to Palm Beach, so they'll be arguing with us, like, Jay-Z, Diplomats, I'm like, y'all really, like, Man, one dude always hated me, Jay-Z, said, fam. Hey, dude argued with me, said Lloyd Banks was better than Lil Wayne, I was like, that was what? probably me, that was probably what? me. No, was you, was you, somebody in high school. What? And Man, I wouldn't even entertain that. that. Hey, that boy I wouldn't said, even entertain that. That boy said, give me a punchline. I said, his whole track is punchline. That was me, bro. About? I think that was me. I hate I those arguments, you, too. I'll fuck with you. I'll fuck with you. No, I hate those arguments. That whole give me a punchline shit. Because yeah. sometimes you could be you could be such a fan of somebody that they got so much, you can't really think of, damn, which one did I want to say? Real G's. Exactly. Man, like lasagna. It, nah, fuck that. Bruh, the, the only the only punchline he heard from Lil, Lil Wayne was I'm like a pool table, I keep the eight. I said that's the only thing you heard. I gotta dress as like PO boxes. There is cockpit. No. I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like I know you probably don't want to hear this, Jay, but uh like when we was in high school, y'all only had like one song every year. What New York was, as a whole? New York, New York only had one song. Yeah, every year. I had, had Lean Back one year. year. Bro. Then y'all had I'm from New York one year. Then y'all, then Diplomats did that thing when they had the bottles, the crunk music. Like, y'all only had, like, one track every year. Yeah, that's a fact. Lil Wayne? That nigga had... <laughs> Lil Wayne was smashing shit. That nigga went five years without dropping an album and was on every song on the radio. <laughs> as bad as y'all want me to take my hat off, I'm not. <laughs> nah, keep it on. That make, that make the joke sound even better. I got it right here. I got nah, it. Nah, right you good. It. But it's right just, here. it's just this whole. Hey, man, look. All right, look. Back on the topic of Benny, bro. <laughs> he can't do that. I'm gonna tell you why he can't do that. Just on some, on a serious, I'm not on a serious note. He can't do that because music don't sell the same no more. That's one. Even if it did, he still wouldn't better do that. What was DMX? Because his fan, song? his fan base is not there. So what? Get, get at me, dog. They don't even that was have... the first that was the first song they used for promotional use. I think the really? first official song was the um the Rough Riders anthem. Yeah, yeah. But still, they they used that so. as the first official song, but the pro- the first promotional song was the Get At Me record. But my point was that Benny has like 20 tapes and he doesn't have one of those bangers like that. He don't. Not at all. Then, and I, I, mess, I mess with Benny. Yeah, right I, I, I fuck with Benny. Benny nice. Him and Conway. I'm I'm there's, levels. there's there's levels. I'm gonna ask you this, dude. He got a song better than that song that DMX did with uh he ain't got no song better than DMX at all, fam. DMX with Cisco. No. Mm-mm. Then it <laughs> you well, can take the weakest DMX song there. record, bro, and Benny you don't have a song better than DMX. I'm sorry, you don't. It ain't gonna happen. Uh, DMX was doing it like they be playing, they get they get caught up on that crack and shit. Forget about that story. This dude had tracks, he had out oh, my mama, he did. Dropped it's two hits albums in the same following. year and went platinum with both. Yeah, it's hits versus cult following. You feel me? It ain't happening. It Bro, ain't like happening. That backstage, he killed Jay Z on that freestyle. <laughs> Nigga, what? Put pinstripes across your windpipe. 
Yeah, yeah. Head. That Muslim dude came out. Yeah. Yo, the, yo, the Muslim dude was hard. <laughs> yeah, Muslim the bodyguard. Dude. Yeah, he was hard. But Benny ain't doing that, bro. I fucks with Benny. I think Benny can sell well, but outselling X and thinking you finna It's different variables. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not the same. So he shouldn't have said that. I think shout out to West Side Gun. Promotion. Promotion. Yeah, shout shout out to West Side Gun having the gangster grills that dropped Friday. Oh, he got one too? Yeah, it came I'm out. I'm gonna check I'm gonna check that out. I still ain't listen to his or I'm about to listen to his now because I'm just not learning about it. I still got to listen to drama, YBs. Big comeback. Big comeback. No, I'm here been for you. Yeah, John been killing shit. We got you know, JD. We grew up on that Gangsta Grills. Hell yeah. We got JD producing Currency's album. You're from the South. How do you feel about that? Currency? Currency was like that cool dude. Like, we ain't really listening to Currency. If he wasn't with Wayne, there's a couple people that was if they wasn't with Wayne, I don't know who was listening to him. Like, Damn. People don't know. I believe it. Jules Santana's got cool down here because he was with Wayne. I no, feel that's like crazy Vice because in New York, because in, yeah, I was just about to say in New York, Wayne got cool in New York because he was hanging Jules out with Dipset. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. We, we didn't even we wasn't fucking with Diplomat like Dipset. No, nah. like we like like everybody like Cameron. I'm gonna tell you that everybody like Cameron is still my favorite one out of Dipset. That's yeah. a fact. They Jules just smart. <laughs> He just funny and he can rap. He can freestyle. His last couple of albums been been hard. Y'all don't know if y'all listen to him. Yeah, hell yeah. I think Jim, Jim Jones was talking about that. Not better now. I think Jim Jones got the crown of Dipset right now. He, he hell no. They Cameron would say Jim Jones is the better lyricist, but I don't know if he make the best songs. Cameron is like he got the cool shit going. He can rap. Fashion, he's like a like some actor. people. Some people got better lyrics, but they don't make better songs. You know what I mean? I think Jim caught one when he did the baller. Once Shout he did balling, that was one of them songs that yeah. yeah when ballin', he did yeah. balling, he was he was cool. Um, but I think from the I think from the very beginning, Cam got the history, <laughs> so we all familiar with Cam. Yeah, but I think overall, Jewels was the one, and had he stayed focused. And not went to jail. His name, he should be up there with Wayne. I don't give a fuck what nobody Ju- say. Jewel, Jewel should be like, up there with Lil Wayne. We Jewel should be looking like at Jewel Wayne the same way we look at Wayne. Yeah. Jewel was like like Lil Wayne and the Hot Boys. That's how Jewel was. He was the cool one. He said the cool shit. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, he fucked that up. But he fucked it up. Even Cam said it. He fucked it up. Cam just aired out Ben Simmons. Said I went to the game. You're airballing the layup. Stop fucking playing with me. <laughs> Do you think oh, yeah. Ben Simmons doesn't want to play basketball no more? Is he bullshitting? Is he rusty? Airballing rusty. layups. He rusty, bro. He just rusty. In the last three years, how much how much ball has he played? Oh. He's just he rusty, bro. Back injury, mental health issues. He rusty. Now, kid. if we have if we have in this same problem mid season, then yeah, we got a problem. But bro, they only like seven games in. Come on, man. Yeah, they're like three and. It's three early. And four maybe. Yeah, it's I mean, early. I mean, but he he went like six eight right. Yeah, he about LeBron height. So how can you airball the layup? Did you see the? I, it, it was like a floater. I, I seen it. I seen it, but it's like you 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 must don't care at that point. Like you, that's what he says. You don't want to play no fucking I wouldn't him, say bro. that. You got to think about you it. Wanna you want to play a floater. Do you kind of like let. Think about the word to... floater. You letting it float. <laughs> so maybe he just put too much air under it, so it came down. He too, killed too it soon. in preseason. Eight though. I mean, he if he going for a dunk, that's man. different. If he going for nah. a dunk, then I'm with you. He's six eight. You can't miss this, no dunk now. <laughs> but it's a floater, bro. You just same preseason Ben. He's bullshitting, son. And the he's putting no up more. numbers, bro. Hey, man, you, hey, trade me for him, Ben J. Hey, he don't give me a care. week. Give me a week. I give, I give, you, I give you two players. I give you two players for him. I don't know. He was nine, eight, and nine. Not too impressive, but I'm keeping him. Yeah, you man. keeping him because you already know what it is when he's asking. Because somebody into offered it. me Westbrook though. Westbrook does better numbers, bro. That boy been trash too this year. Not if go on to get Westbrook then, fam. Go on get Westbrook then. My bad, yo. Go ahead and take him. No, it's don't take him. No, don't take him. 
Go on, take love, him. Man. They said he gonna, who, he gonna, he gonna ball out worse. later too. They had a post is definitely worse. Ben they had a post right on now. social media. Who who layout was worth Ben Simmons or his? Like, why are you even in that conversation? No, Russell Ben Westbrook. Simmons is worse. The Lakers is using Westbrook all wrong. Facts. <laughs> I think they, they, they using him wrong. Out of there, bro. They using him wrong. They're not letting him be the point guard. That's what they fucking up at. Russ, Russ is a point guard. When you have the Lakers, LeBron is a point guard. <laughs> so you got two point guards on the floor together. Now mm-hmm. I get it. LeBron technically plays the three because of his height, but LeBron is a point guard. When he came in with Cleveland, he was the point guard. He always brings. When he went with Miami, he was the point guard. Yeah. When he went back to Cleveland, he was the point guard. They made Kyrie the shooting guard. Kyrie yeah. wasn't even playing point no more. He got the Magic Johnson shit going. Exactly. Yep, yep, they yep. all big guards. Ben Simmons is the same way. He's a point guard. He just happened to be six fucking nine. Yeah. So you have to use Ben as a point guard. Move Kyrie back to the shooting guard. Get him out the point guard. Move him to shooting guard. Let Ben Simmons run the game. He don't have to score. He was not a big scorer in, in Philadelphia. That's what people forget. He's like Draymond. Exactly. And he's good on defense. But people forget he's not a scorer. I don't know where all this came from of him having to be a scorer. But Ben Simmons was never a scorer. So I don't understand why this is a big deal now. I don't he's get like it. He's like an A13 and 9 type dude. Exactly. He always been that way. Look at his numbers from when he first came in. He always attacked the basket. He was never a jump shooter. So I'm not understanding why that's a big problem now. What's your team, yo? Oh, my team? Yeah. Oh, you ain't going to believe it. <laughs> I've heard it all this season, so. I'm, nah, my I'm team always... been a Nuggets since Carmelo came in, been a Nuggets. I okay. had the basketball team my whole life. When, when Carmelo and LeBron came in, I said, whatever team Carmelo go to, that's going to be my team. That's a fact. The Nuggets was definitely my number two behind the Bulls, of course. But yeah, Nuggets is definitely my fan? number two because I fuck with Melo. You like it's still good though. It just like people get hurt every year. Like J- Jamal Murray. Like we got a mm. team. Like you look at that our nigga team. We look problem. like a college team. We look like Jamal a Murray team. was a problem. He be hooping. Is he back from injury yet? Yeah, yeah, he back. He, he back. back. Okay. Uh, you know we got Jack. You know the Joker. Like we yeah, got yeah. like a team Facts. that look like a college MVP. team, really. But everybody, somebody get hurt. You know what I mean? No, nah, Nuggets cool. They fucked that team up though, but they cool. They bounced back kind of okay. Shout as far as jazz. talent, y'all ready to jazz. get into the last? Yeah, jazz they kind of about it up. That's what I say. Yeah, y'all ready to get into this last video tonight? Who we got? I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember. Nah, I really don't, yo. It's all on the fly. I want natural reactions from myself and y'all. I think we you got. I would get natural reaction from me. I think it's Lyle Russell. Damn, I got to move all this shit. Oh, yeah, I remember you talking about that. Okay. Damn, all this shit in the way. Hold on. I still ain't Jay's right Music song. Corner. We got your boy, Don P in the building. Yes, sir. I don't know why the shit put it this way today. Are you playing Lyle Russell? Yeah, Lyle Russell be snapping. Yeah, he be Oh, you heard of him? I ain't, yeah. I ain't heard this one. I heard, I heard a different one. Yeah, he nice. We got a little Russell out. Freestyle, little Blood TV uh, exclusive. Sorry to cut you off. What were you saying? No, no, you good. I was telling him I only watched the 2021 Freestyle. That shit hard. I ain't yeah. never heard of him, so this going to be new for me. Oh, uh, man, he hard. Like, like two, three days ago, he just did a Sway Freestyle and also did a... Who's another big New York platform? I see he's on the Breakfast Club. Yeah, but yeah. That, he was did last, that was last year, though. Yeah, this is new. Uh, like three days ago, he did it. But we'll get into it. The La Russell Freestyle, Little Blood TV exclusive. Shout out to California. Shout out to Don P. Shout out to Shot Town's very own King Vance. And shout out to the A45 J Royal. Let's go. Little Blood TV. Two in the building. Come on. Little Blood TV. Yeah. Exclusive shit. Exclusive. <laughs> Bro. Hey. Oakland Vallejo. Come on. Let's talk to him hey. after. 
I had to crawl up out my cave and put my smack on, niggas. It ain't no mail, it ain't no deal. My shit black on, nigga. Can't no white man tell me shit about no rap song, nigga. Got y'all playing in that field, I'm getting my cap on, nigga. You ain't heard my last song, nigga. I'm the one that's talking all the truth. These niggas be killing themselves. I'm the one that talk them off the roof. I'm the one that's talking about stock. I'm the one that's talking about growth. They ain't never got shit to say, but they the one that's talking shit the most. I'm the one that's talking about debt. Make sure you can never go broke. These niggas just show you how to hang. I'm the one come confiscate the rope. Made ways I could probably shake the boat. But the game they could probably need the mold. Made black boy Joe and gave him hope. Won balls and songs and gave him both. I've been up in a position, the person that probably gonna lead us away. <clears throat> they killing niggas for profit, no profit. The future is needless to say. Ah! They still a fashion and coach and then resell the shit that we made. You hear what I'm saying, no? Hey, I'm on a roll again. Ah, save my soul again. Hey, how you gonna burn the bridge? Yeah, then try to pay toll again. Hey, I'm feeling whole again. Yeah, back on my vegan shit. Hey, I have been meditating. I'm learning breathing tricks. Ah, I'm in a whole different zone. Ain't got a lie in my songs. I made amends with my exes. I've been writing all my wrongs. I heard a nigga talking reckless. Say that he writing all my songs, but he ain't got a motherfucking hit. Sound like something going wrong. Man, what the fuck is going on? I don't want gay niggas shots. I don't want gay niggas hooked. I don't want to show them how to rock. I know a jealousy and greed. That's just the shit the hood breed. You hate yourself and blaming me. It's all applied to Slater King. I love my brother like my brother. We could be building one another. But you trying to kill me undercover. I'm not a fighter, I'm a lover. You've been conditioned by the system. You cannot see that we the same. You trying to bring me down with you. I'm just trying to bring change. It's love. Come on. <laughs> I'm changing the name from Lil Russell to Love Russell. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to him, man. Oh, Talk to him, Beautiful. Man. Thank you. Wow. It's not the same. Wow. Once again, it's your boy Jay today. Watch they fly for the four five. That was Lil Russell freestyle. Uh, Lil Blood exclusive. Before I ask y'all your opinion, I remember we used to have conversations when we were in the military, and you used to be like, "Yeah, but y'all Spanish niggas stick together." <laughs> I think y'all are doing that now, and that's the recipe, because y'all are the best at everything, and y'all are starting to get it to stick with your culture, <laughs> and I think y'all going to win, so what y'all think of that? Mm. <laughs> mm. Yo, the comments you just made, bro, look. Right. <laughs> we we doing it more than we have. We ain't nowhere near that shit yet. We ain't sticking together, bro. <laughs> That's why your man's laughing, bro. Like we ain't, we ain't there yet. Nah, you know he remembers that convo. We get in there, but we ain't, we ain't there yet. We nah. far from there, bro. We are used far. To, you used to there. tell me that you don't get it because your people stick together. I remember. <laughs> no, nah, Spanish people do stick together, though. I ain't even gonna. All people stick together. We we just don't. You know what I'm saying? I see the video uh today about uh one of our homeboys from the navy posted. And it says, why is why is black men and black women their own entity? Independent black women. Nobody says that. Besides yeah, that. nobody. Well, they say that. Nobody says in the independent white lady. Independent yeah, yeah, Asian I, I seen, lady. I've seen that video. I don't know if you're referring to that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Worst enemy, man. And, and, you know, it might just go down to the Willie Lynch theory. You know about that or not? Yeah, I read that. Briefly, uh, for what you guys told me, but nah, I don't research I read that. that kind of stuff. Yeah, Willie Lynch theory is the man against the women, the, the light against the dark, the oh, old yeah. against the young, you know what I'm saying? The kids against the parents. So, but it only works against us, it only yeah. works with us. That's it because you got eight scenarios that you're supposed to be against, so you're gonna fall in one of them. So, you just create this group of people confused because this person is against this person. Even if I say, Oh, I got a problem with. Old people, well, I got a problem with women. Well, I don't got a problem with women. Well, I got a problem with the youth. I got a problem with old people. I got a problem. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you create the confusion. And it's been like this ever since slavery. You know what I mean? Can I add to that? And not to sound foul, but like, you know, Puerto Rican ain't a race. It's an ethnicity. Yeah. You got Puerto Ricans yeah. that look like me. You got Puerto Ricans that look like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, My little brother got blonde hair. You feel me? Yeah. We never... As a Puerto Rican, we never looked at it. We might joke with each other, but we never looked at it like that. We'd be like, yo, that's my guy, you feel me? And yeah. I feel like with y'all, I don't mean I don't like talking like this because it sounds like I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> you it's do, like, bro. We know we know you fam. It's, it's like the colorism. Oh, you're light skin, you're this. Yeah. Who gives a fuck, bro? It's just how it is. That's another one too, light against dark. So it just 
it just how it is, you know what I mean? But do you get what I'm saying? It's like yeah. we're all Puerto Rican, so we'd be like, yo, whatever, dog. That's I will not- say this though. I was in Puerto Rico for two months. When I asked people where to go, they always tell me to go to the west side, north side. Only that's one dude told me on the, was- Yeah, I got an area that's that's dark skinned people, right? Mm-hmm. It's called Louisa. The only mm-hmm. person that told me to go there was a dude from Philly. He's Puerto Rican, but he's from Philly. He's the only person that told me to go there out of the two months. The whole two months, nobody never told me to go to the east side. Nobody never told me to go to Louisa besides him. And when I went there, everybody's my color. Yeah, my dad's from the west side. So they 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 do care. They don't talk about it. But I will say this. That area, Louisa, is the only area like all the black people that. And only one person told me to go there. He just happened to be from Philly. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not familiar with like. Puerto Rico like that. I, I my family's from the northwest, but that yeah. town that you I don't I don't know that town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh it's it's by uh San Juan. Your people probably San Juan is like Dilla. nah San Juan, San Juan is, Juan is like central it's like central north. Yeah, it's more like my dad's from like Maya West and like Oh I Maya West. Dance. Yeah, I that's where my dad's from. Too. Maya yeah. West straight. That's the West Side. But that shit is out. I'm not yeah. like Puerto Rican like that. I'm from New York. You know what I mean? I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I don't even speak Spanish. If, but yeah, that's just the way it is, though, man. It's just the way it is. You know. Hopefully soon it'll change, but this shit crazy. I mean, you've been in Houston. It's crazy because it's funny that you talk about sticking together because when you go to Houston, you see every African you can think of. That's true. And then they, like when they meet you, they like, hey, you need to go over there. You need to go see. You know what I'm saying? And the funny part is, I was in DC and I had on a gorilla shirt. You know that that rock and roll band Gorillas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I never listened to none of their music. But I remember when I was in elementary, like I was watching the MTV Awards and they won like five awards. I'm like, they don't even got no real music video. They got cartoons and they want to. Yo, to, so, to uh, add into that, that's why I always did all my cartoon covers was based off the gorillas. Oh, like really? Cover, yeah, because of them. Shout that's out crazy. Them. But you know, know why they did that, that though, right? Huh? You know why they did that though, right? I didn't know. They didn't want to be noticed in public. Oh, Same they wanted here. to. They wanted. They wanted to keep being free in the public to go where they wanted to go without being noticed. That's smart. So they did the cartoon shit. That's smart. So they didn't I want did people it. be, you know what I mean? Because you know, once you become a celebrity, once you become known, you can't do regular shit no more. You can't go to the gas station no more. Yeah. You can't do doodle shit no more because people notice you. Yeah. They didn't want to go through that, so they use. For the anybody controls. listening that knows me and is a fan of me, that's why I have twelve, thirteen albums, and you never see my face on none of them covers. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. No, that's a fact. Every every <laughs> album that I have in my phone, he don't have his real face on that shit. That's crazy. I never it's the knew cartoon. That. It's the cartoon version. <laughs> I never knew that's why you did it. And the crazy part is, so I just bought this shirt. I bought this shirt a couple of years ago, and that shirt gets more attention than any other shirt I wear. Like it can be, it can be design or whatever. That shirt gets more attention. So when I was in uh, DC, I went to the Pentagon to see uh, Will. He was working out there, so I got to go in there. And uh, mm-hmm. I wore it one night, and the African dude said, hey, that's your name, Brian? And I'm like, nah. He was like, because if that's your name, Brian, I'd rather buy that than to buy Louis Vuitton or Burberry or any of that. So that's, that's really awesome. what sparked it. Mm-hmm. That was like 2018 when he said that. And he was from uh, Senegal, same place they come from. He was from Senegal. It just came out of nowhere. And then later on that night, I got on all my shit, and some dude said, hey, you African? And I was like, yeah, but nah, not what you talking about. And he was, like, <laughs> he was like, okay, I'm from Ghana. So while I was in D.C., they just kept getting attracted to me. I'm like, what, what's going on? And he was like on me the whole night, just kept talking to me. I was just like, all right. But that gorilla shirt, it, it gets more attention than anybody. I mean, anything I've ever wore. Like people walk up to me like, what's your favorite song? I'm like, I don't know, no songs. <laughs> Some cartoons, man. I don't know the songs by name, but I know a few songs if I hear it. I don't yeah, know exactly. by I don't know them by name though. I don't listen to nothing but rap and Donnell Jones. So <laughs> hey, Shot Town in the building, Southside. That that random as shit. That boy said Donnell Jones. Hey, Donnell Jones, that one though. People that sleep boy. on my boy, man. You know who I listen to? I just be listening to Young Dolph. Hey, Dolph R. Rest I hope peace. they come. I hope they. I was just I'm literally talking about this with somebody on Facebook today. I hope they drop something else. I know he got more music in the. In I, the think, 
I think so. The funny part is, right? I talked to his cousin on social media, and uh, she'll go back and forth for a little bit. But uh, I think I think they're gonna drop that shit like around I the hope. time he passed away. Cause I hope he said he had. They said he had an album called Untamed, and it ain't dropped yet. Mm. So I think that's what what it's gonna be. But I think they're gonna drop it around the time he passed away. What it was November seventeenth. Yeah. So. Maybe so, maybe in the right next right few time. weeks. Well, hopefully, if it's not a solo, at least hopefully another Dumb and Dumber with um Glock. Oh, Key Glock. Yeah, bro, because that them, them 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 two mixtapes was hard. 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 That shit was hard. They magic together for real. And like me, like you know how you asked earlier, you like you listen to Pusha T, and I'm like I don't really listen to him. like. No offense, like these people can rap, but I don't really fuck with people that make one album a year, like. When I was playing with Wayne, mm-hmm. Wayne was dropping a mixtape every month. See, That's like Wayne fucked bo- it up. Boutique rappers and shit. Nah, see, Wayne fucked it up. And then as much, Young as, as much as I love Wayne, Wayne fucked it up. He fucked he up the you. way we sit with music. <laughs> he spoiled you. We used to sit with music. People would drop singles throughout the year, and the album would come I out until make later on in the year. Because G Unit and D Block used to drop mixtapes like every month. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, they did too. But little Wayne, but Wayne was on a mainstream more... level, he had yeah. that. Yeah, he's not the first to do it. He did it the best. Yeah, yeah. because when I first heard of G Unit, when I first heard of Fifty Cent in June, I was like in seventh grade. But That's Fifty didn't drop an album and didn't really do anything until like eighth grade year, like a whole year later. But I had already heard Power of the Dollar and Guess Who's Back by the time seventh grade came around. Yeah. So yeah, he they was out there dropping that music, and you have the G Unit Radio Volume One, Two, Three, and all that other shit. <laughs> So yeah, they was out there doing it. Yeah, I'm just Don Pete. Huh? What's your top five, fam? Top five rappers. Uh, to be uh, of course, of course, Tupac. Pac is in mine. Tupac, Wayne. Wayne is in mine. This ain't no order, but of course, Young Dolph. Okay. Um. Kanye West. Okay. West. I fuck with that. That's four, right? That's three. Surprisingly, he's not in mine. That's three. That's three? You no. said Pac, Wayne, and Dolph. Pac, Wayne, Dolph, and Kanye West. Oh, and Kanye, yeah, that's four. My bad. All right, that's so four. Number five. Uh, number five would probably be Big Sean. Okay. Damn. All right. I like, I like Big I told you I listen to lyrics. Big Sean got like that. What it was, that dark... Dark Paradise uh, album. That shit. Yeah, that man, shit was, that was hard. the best album that year, man. That shit was hard. I ain't gonna lie, yo. My wife, my wife played it so much, I had to go listen to it myself. Bro, she was playing that Big Sean album. Live. That album was the best album that year. Like I'm talking about lyrics. Like Drake probably yeah. got some shit. So the reason why Drake's not up there. Now I'm gonna tell you, like the first two albums, my favorite Drake album is Take Care. The whole album. The whole album. I don't tell really? people. Nah, that shit is a classic. I don't tell Take people. Take care? That's, that's my second favorite. album, right? Nothing yeah, was and the that's same. the one that's supposed to be the problem album. The sophomore album is supposed to be the worst album. Take care. Only call, song, only call albums classic if I can listen to the whole thing without skipping nothing. Like, the song might not even be garbage, but you know how sometimes you're like, I'm just not feeling that, and you skip it. Underground the whole King. Take Care album, I listen to it every day. The whole the album. Ride. Carter one, the first Carter Wayne, I listened to that whole album straight. Not the that first two. Lyrics. Yeah. I like part two. The first two is my first shit. Two but not that, not that those lyrics are is better than what he's saying, you know, after that. It just the way he put it, like the music, the beat, the way they put it on the album, you listen to everything straight through. That's why I call it a classic. Not because people like it's objective. Yeah, like that one with Drake. What it's called? If you're reading this now, it's too late or something. That's my shit. That's, That's shit the only hard. Drake project I could listen to. I'm gonna tell you this. That shit's hard. I like listened to it two weeks and I was done with it. I don't never want to listen to it again. I just listened to that shit like two days ago. Jungle like, is it, hard. I just so like, listened to that shit two days to ago. To me, Drake got like five music. Like when you get it, like that shit hard. You listen to it two weeks, and me, I'm done after two weeks. I'm like, yeah, I'm you said who? I'm tired of that shit. You said who? He, he said who you think he said. No, he didn't. Uh, what you, you, say, what'd you just he, say? You say he got fab music? Fab music. Like, it's hot at uh, that time. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. yeah. Like, he didn't say what I, I thought he said. He didn't say what I thought he said. He thought he said fabulous. 
Nah, 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 nah. So like, like I listen to a Drake album, and I won't li- ever listen to it again. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a fact. Like for no. instance, right, this last Thanks album, it was all R and B, and the last oh, track got Twenty One Savage on it, I and it didn't fit that. at all. That didn't fit at all. And I talked to my homeboy. He like, hey, where, where's your, where's your Rick Ross feature? Where's your, where's your Lil Wayne feature? Where's your, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, Random nah, actually, sprinkle. I mean, the Twenty One Savage record was hard. It just didn't fit. Hard, what, it didn't fit what he track. did with the album. It didn't fit what he did with the album, though. That's the last track too. That's what. But made maybe they bad. were transitioning into this collaboration project. That shit too too long. Mad long. It took too <laughs> long. If that if that was the play, it took too long. Way too long. Hey, that album was trash. Because now we got to be pushed back even more because Forty Six. So it took too long. That shit should have came right behind it, like a not even a month. It should have been like a month right behind it. Because we don't sit with like that's what I was just saying. We don't sit with albums anymore. We don't sit with the music no more. So the moment Drake shit came out, we should have gave it two three weeks, and then boom, the collab album. Let's go. Probably should have did it like that. And they didn't <laughs> do it that way. So now that you got to push it back even more because Forty said it's like, all right, we hyped on it because of you know it's Drake in twenty one, but. Imagine what the hype would have been after we just heard Drake and 21 on the album together. Mm-hmm. Because when the album first came out, that's the only song people talked about. They was like, yo, y'all heard that Drake and 21? <laughs> that was now, you, now, two, three weeks later, you dropped a collab album. It's even better. It's, it's bigger. It's out of here. It's gone. Regardless of what it sounds like, it's gone. Smart. It's what a time to be alive all over again. It's gone. What a time to be alive. Because him and Future took smart. off. They was gone. Out of the that would have been smart. Yeah, I don't mean to cut y'all short, but I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> he said he got to go. Yeah, it's almost six. I got to bounce. I keep forgetting you an hour ahead of me, bro. Uh, I want to thank you again. Double Shot Owner, TBD yes, Podcast, Don P. Shout out to Lake Worth, Florida. Hold on, bro. I know you said you got to go, but we can't We can't just go like that. He got to <laughs> he, he gotta let the people know about his podcast, bro. Yeah, we got to hear about this real quick. Uh, so, TBD podcast. We did about thirty episodes last year. We've been taking right. on the eighties. People got different stuff going on in their life, but it's about different topics dealing with women or dealing with stuff that's going on, something weird that might be going on in the world. So that's mm-hmm. what it was about. Right. It was, you know, it get a lot of controversy because we talking trash about women, but people would say. Yeah, I talk trash about women. Why y'all don't got a woman on there? People don't know, but we actually asked women to come on there. Nobody wanted to come on there. Or they'll come up with an excuse why they can't come on there. Is that Kevin <laughs> Samuels 2.0? Yeah. Nah, I wouldn't say that. Nah, because, Kevin, like that. because Kevin yeah, Samuels awesome. came at both men and women. It's just okay. only the women shit went viral. Yeah. He came at men. I've seen, vid- I seen his shit. I, I've you actually watched you. his shit. He come at men too. You ain't got that thing. You ain't got no money. Stop expecting to get this type of woman. Yo, he used to treat <laughs> yo. He used to treat the shit out of niggas, bro. But only the women shit went viral. Niggas got it too. Don't get it fucked up. Nah, he came at niggas' heads too. If you ever want to collaborate, I have a men's rights page that went viral many times, <laughs> and I would love to support your movement. No, nah, that's a fact. His his men's rights page <laughs> be out of that, bro. It's the reason I can't go live on any of my uh, accounts, but. <laughs> Shout out to my hey, you uh, hop on Twitter, Elon Musk, 24,000 followers. Yeah, right. Hey, you hop on Twitter, <laughs> Elon Musk is letting it all fly. Niggas are saying the nigga word with the ER on that bitch. Ain't nobody oh, getting flagged, man. bro. Ain't nobody getting flagged on Twitter right now. Hey, bring, 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 it, bring it to Twitter, bro. Down, you might blow up. <laughs> yo, what's your social media? Where can people find you? Yo, what's your website? Uh, double shot underscore apparel. For uh, the Instagram, and then like right I've been having problems with Shopify, so I'm about to get my own website with it. Cause for some reason they won't up let me update my uh, debit card because I lost it. <laughs> mm. I done got on chats with them like five times. I'm like just do this, and then I do it, and it don't work. So still trying to figure that out. But yeah, just get on Double Shot Apparel. You can uh, DM me. We can cash up, and we'll get it done. We'll ship out to you. Happy once again, Don Pete, Lake yes, Worth, sir. Florida. 
Shot Town's very own King Vance. Yes, sir. Y'all came in peace, leave in peace. We love y'all. Jay's Music Corner. Let's go. All right.